Okay. You ready? Eva, you ready? Good evening. Welcome uh, to the PVUSB board meeting. We have translation in Spanish. If you need that support, please see Urania Lopez. Bienvenidos a la reunión de la Junta Directiva de PBUSD. Disponemos de transición en español. Si necesita ese apoyo, consulte a Yarena López. If someone would like to speak to an item on the agenda, they must complete a speaker card and hand it to um, our IT support, who will then hand it to Eva Renteria. I also see a lot of people here this evening and new faces as well, so I want to take a, mem a moment to establish some ground rules. There may be differences of opinion, sometimes strong differences of opinion. Please give those speaking the same respect that you would like to receive when you are speaking. This will allow everyone to be heard and the board to conduct, conduct its necessary business for the district. Now I will move us to item 3.2, and I will ask Vice President okay. Trustee Soto to please Be lead done. us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I'd also like to take a moment just to note for the public record that Trustee DeSerpa does have an excused absence for this evening. Now we will move to item 3.3, superintendent comments, um, and I will ask Dr. Heather Contreras, our superintendent, to make her comments. Good evening. It is great to see a very full house this evening. I am just completing my very first week in PBUSD, and it has been an outstanding week. I want to share with you some of the things that I've done since I started on May 1st. So we had a district office meet and greet, and I met all of the people in the district office building. I took a tour of the district office, and then that evening of the first day, we had a community meet and greet. Many people came out, and I was able to hear many voices of things uh, going, happening in the community and a lot of things that people are very proud of. I met with our transportation department, our maintenance department, our nutrition services. I held a meet and greet for our teachers union, the PVFT, as well as a meet and greet for CSEA. And I've been out to EA Hall, Rolling Hills. I met with Chief Zamora. I visited Watsonville High and PV High today, also Rio Del Mar and Bradley. And right before this meeting, I was able to attend the art show and see students engaged with art that they had produced, both musically and uh, in painting. One thing that I have learned through all of that is that there is a tremendous amount of passion and excitement and enthusiasm and pride in this community. And I am so thrilled and I have so much gratitude to the board for selecting me to be the superintendent of such a rich and diverse community. I also understand that the community has been waiting to hear a little bit on ethnic studies. So I've spent some time studying and researching ethnic studies in this district, and I'm really impressed to share that we actually have three articulated courses in which students receive ethnic studies in our high schools in order to fulfill the graduation requirement. I think that that goes to say a lot for this district because students are able to have some choice in how they receive this content area. I also understand that teachers were, were given two years of training to be, able to, um, to be able to speak and teach and instruct in ethnic studies, and I think that's tremendous that that was offered. I understand that our administrators still need training and that we need to look for ways to continue the training for the teachers, continue training for administrators, and to support and grow the ethnic studies program and become as diverse as a, and have it represent the diversity in the community. As I move forward in my superintendency, I am going to be holding a series of Look, Listen, and Learn. My first one is actually going to be tomorrow night at Aptos Junior High School. And during that time, I'm going to be asking two questions. What's working really well and what are we proud of? And what are some of the challenges? 
And I want to hear from all the community members about some of those things, including ethnic studies, so that as we go forward, we can make the very best decisions in this community together, collaboratively, and with input as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Contreras. Um, now I will move us to item 3.4, governing board comments, and as well as reports on standing committee meetings. This is an opportunity for each board member to make a few comments, and we will start with Trustee Bolano Scow. Thank you, President Acosta. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, welcome, Dr. Heather Contreras as our next superintendent. We're very excited to have you here. I know one of the things um, our community has been looking for is a stronger, more positive working relationship with our labor partners, our teachers, our classified workers. And I can already tell that's, that's now underway uh, and with our parents and community partners as well. So we're excited to have you here. There's a lot of good things that were in Modesto that I know you can bring to benefit our district as well. Um, I just want to announce, um, I know we're going to have an arts update later. Uh, I'm excited to hear about our VAPA programs from Stephanie Monroe. And we had a great presentation. Thank you to Stephanie and uh, everybody and all the parents and the kids who just performed before the meeting started. And I want to let you all know, if you have a child in PVUSD in fourth grade or above, we have a free summer music camp. We will teach you instruments uh, for two weeks at EA Hall from June 17th to June 28th. I got some flyers here, just come flag me down. I'll be around, but if you have any children, fourth grade and above, and want to do, learn an instrument, we'll be there this summer at EA Hall, thanks to Expanded Learning. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Trustee Bolano scan We'll now move to Trustee Dr. Holm. I want to echo my colleagues' uh, welcome of Dr. Contreras on her first board meeting. I, anybody who can get the, the seven of us to agree on something is, is uh, already doing something remarkable, and I just want to say I'm, in, I'm, I'm impressed by you know how you've hit the ground running, and the, you know the demonstrations that you've already shown on on listening to the community, and and I appreciate that, and I, I from what I, the feedback I've been getting from our stakeholders that that's also appreciated by them. Um, I attended uh, our seal of biliteracy and getting to see you know 140 students you know achieve that designation it's 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 impressive and it, I it's just it's so heartening to see that happen um, I also attended our innovator of the year ceremony last Friday and just the work that our uh, personnel in PVUSD what they're doing in our district and hearing those individual studies and having you know been part of you know kind of evaluating all of those it's it's just again the work that our PVUSD personnel are doing, the commitment to this community is, it's inspiring. So, so thank you to everybody who you know, was an innovator of the year. Um, the Pajo Valley Education Foundation, we met and just what we're building with that organization, I, I'm just, I'm so excited. You know, it's like, I, I feel like we're the little organization that could. You know, started, you know, it's like we're just chugging along and the works that we're doing with PVUSD on the Tiny Homes Initiative, you know, it's, we're going to be launching, you know, that, that first project soon. I, think, I didn't write down the date, but I think it's June 3rd. Um, and it's exciting. And did a site visit with our, our new superintendent at Rio de Mar Elementary today. So that's it. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Uh, Trustee Dodge Jr. I'd just like to say good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. I think it's great that we're here in the City Council Chambers tonight. Hopefully we can continue to keep having meetings here. Uh, th thank you, City Council members who reside in my trustee areas for always keeping in contact with me. Uh, I'd also like to say thank you and welcome Heather Contreras for being here. Um, I represent area that represents a lot of people. And i just like to you know, say thank you for visiting E Hall. Uh, it's, it, these schools that I represent have been here you know, for almost 100 years, and so they mean a, a lot to us and the students and to the community. You know, for seeing D. Gonzalez's special ed program, who I hope we, continue, we can continue to support. Um, she's uh, a great teacher who reaches all across this district, and so hopefully we can continue to keep that program. Also, you meet and greet at Watsonville High School, and you know, just to repeat, Watsonville High School is you know 
means a lot to us. Once a wildcat, always wildcat. Um, and I, I just also like to say thank you to Gary Manfrey and congratulations for um, getting accepted to the Watsonville High School Foundation. Uh, Watsonville Coast Produce is a, an important staple of our community and uh, generations. And so I'd just like to say congratulations and thank you. Thank you, um, Trustee Dodge Jr. Trustee Flores. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And welcome, Dr. Contreras. I'm so excited to start this journey with, alongside you. Um, I was able to attend the transportation uh, tour and uh, PV High School today with Dr. Contreras. And it's amazing what she's gold, get what goals she's given herself to accomplish this first short time here. So I, I, I appreciate that. And I will try to be at as many as I can be. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Vice President Soto. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Thank you for the recognition, and thank you for being here this evening. Uh, I want to give uh, Dr. Contreras a hearty welcome to PVUSD, and to reiterate Dr. Holmes' words, yeah, it's an uh, act of God for you to uh, get the seven of us to come to something and uh, concur on that. Uh, we've had some great conversations since you've been here. Um, uh, you've learned about the district, and I've learned about where your vision is going, and we've already had some hurdles that we've had to uh, jump over, and I think you're handling them well. And I look forward to your continued work, and uh, yeah, bring, bring that change that we need here at PVUSD. So thank you very much. Thank you, Vice President Soto. Um, and so I want to, as well, welcome Dr. Heather Contreras to our district and our community. Um, she is very familiar with the PVUSD community, and she has also definitely hit the ground running. Um, I'm finding trouble keeping up with her, actually. Um, we have been together to um, the community meet and greet, the PBFT meet and greet, our CSEA meet and greet, as well as several um, with meeting with several other uh, of our community leaders and community partners. And I want her to thank her for her openness to um, meeting with all of them. We also attended this Seal of Biliteracy event, um, also with Dr. Holm. And trustee, uh, uh, excuse me, trustee Dr. Holm and trustee Deserpa had showed up as well. Um, I also want to um, commend the um, two very outstanding twin sisters from Watsonville High School, Mariana and Isabel Labato Vicino. Um, it was my distinct honor to be able to hang their um, medals around them on at the syllabi literacy event. That is a close personal connection for me as their father was one of my um, professors at um, Cabrillo College. So um, an amazing article on those girls and what they're doing and where they're going and just a huge shout out to them and congratulations. Um, I also want to thank Trustee Dodge Jr. Um, we had a good site visit with Dee Gonzalez in regards um, to the program that she's leading at EA Hall with the life skills. I echo the same sentiment, hope to see that continue. Got to firsthand hear a lot of how that is benefiting a lot of our students, as well as their families, their parents and their siblings. So I um, want to just give a huge shout out to Dee Gonzalez for all you're doing there and let you know we continue to support you. Um, and then lastly, I just want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in our community and in our PBS community and beyond, both this Friday, May 10th and Saturday, May 12th. And from there, we will move on to item 3.5, high school student board representative reports. Um, each one will have five minutes, and I believe we're starting with new school. Do we have new school in the house, or do we have a video representation? Come on up.
Good evening, esteemed Pajaro Valley Unified School District Board members and new superintendent, Dr. Conresa. My name is Andrea Ramirez. We are here to present some of the things that we've been doing at New School this quarter. Today's students went to Kerbeal College Seahawk Prep Day field trip. Senior registered for their college classes and met with counselors to ensure success in their post-secondary plans. At the beginning of our quarter, students met with their parents or guardians to review how they did in the previous quarter. We did that on April 17th and we went and got 17% turned out. Our students of the month rotary were Peter Rodriguez Alonso and Georgian Gamboa. This week we finished our soccer season when we played Sequoia for the third place in soccer and we play El Nido for the first ever Monterey Bay Alternative School Athletic League Flat Football Championship. We also had two guests speak last week as part of our outdoor school and character development program. Mr. Felice came from Elkhorn Slough and Rachel Kitman came and spoke about Monterey Bay habitats. Tomorrow we're going on week five of our outdoor and school and character development program to the aquarium and their science labs. For the first week we went to Mother Nature's Temple and we did rotations that included art, welding, and archery. On week two we went well watching and went on the Elkhorn Slough camera and on the other weeks we did beach cleanup at Marissa and tomorrow to the aquarium. For the first half of the quarter, Kim LaCrosse and Jan O'Brien led us through self-esteem exercises through their organization named California Institute for Invincible Youth. Just like today, we went to Cabrillo. Our academic counselor, Monica Nowlen, takes us to all area junior colleges. She took seniors to Gavilan College on April 10th. Every Friday, we make food with Miss Cat. This Friday, Mr. Renmudis's mother came and helped us make sopas. We also do ceramics every Friday. This last Friday, Environmental Science Workshop came and helped us make catapults. Um, can you please play the video? It's not worth it, Celestia. Uh, okay, Catapult. go. <laughs> it worked, though. Mr. Bermudez brought new school students to the public library to teach younger students how to play Pokemon cards for community service. Your future is our business. Came to speak to us earlier this quarter about the construction trades they they come earlier today with speak speakers about entrepreneurship about the tech industry PV, pvp sa drug and alcohol awareness education We had an incredible credit recovery recognition assembly on April 17th with record-breaking performances from nearly all new school students. Between ingenuity courses and after school PE, new school students have earned 199 extra credits so far this quarter. That's more than six credits earned per participating students in half in the first time of this quarter. 70% of new school students particip 
pay in our after school credit recovery programs. 16 early graduates. We had 16 early graduates this year and more on the way. Thank you for listening and letting us present. Thank you, New School. We'll now um, move to Pajaro Valley High School. Do we have student representatives from PV High? Welcome. Okay. Is this thing on? Okay, perfect. So, hello, President Acosta, Superintendent, Dr. Conchez, welcome, to, um, and also the Board of Trustees. Um, thank you for inviting us to um, present on PV's behalf. My name is Sin Chavez. My name is Mireya, and I'm the ASB Treasurer. My name is Jonathan Escobar. I'm sophomore class president. To start it off, um, we have Club Carnival. On May 1st, we hosted... We hosted our last club carnival, and this club's last opportunity to raise money during, during school. Both teachers and students were able to enjoy some delicious food and snacks while supporting clubs on campus. Next up, we have Jump Into Spirit Summer Spirit Week. From April 29th to May 3rd, we hosted our last Spirit Week Splash Into Summer to kick off our goodbye senior rally. Monday was Country versus Country Club. Tuesday was anything but a backpack versus Kids kids backpack, which is the most popular one we had. We had Wednesday, bikers versus surfers. Thursday was class colors, which is also a rally day. And then Friday was skirts versus shorts, or your prom fit. Next up, we have a senior goodbye rally. For our last rally, we wanted to recognize our seniors from during freshman year online to finally graduating this month. We had a senior parade at the beginning, at the beginning of the rally, and at the end, we had the juniors take their spots at head of the school. So the last month we hosted our Pyre Teacher, which was basically a fundraiser for ASB. Um, a student could purchase one ticket, one dollar for a ticket, and they could pay. They could pay a teacher of their choice. Then we also had Splash Our Senior, which was to kick off our rally and our Spirit Week, which any underclassmen or classmates were able to splash any seniors they wanted. We also want to give a huge thank you before we show what Expanded Learning has done to our campus to Jeanette Duran and Crystal Alvarez for the amazing work and effort they've done for supporting and hosting various events at our school campus. Some of the events that Expanded Learning has hosted for us are Golden China, where students were allowed to sign up um, for a, go go a Golden China plate. There was also painting planters, um, where students were able to paint plots um, after school to de-stress after the third quarter. And then we also had a slime party and egg painting, where students were able to make slime and paint eggs alongside their friends to get ready for AP testing. Then on April 19th, anybody was sign up for after school to go roller skating in Santa Cruz. And then for after school events for athletics, we had boys volleyball April 24th, April 24th, and we won against Watsonville. Track and field April 11th, softball April 25th, and baseball is coming up May 9th. On March 21st, we invited all PV students as well as future Grizzlies to our campus where, where we had the first hour and a half, first hour where we had performances from our cla Flicorico class and our Flicorico club, as well as from our band. And then we also had um, clubs fundraise to bring to fundraise for their club. And then we had the second hour, we had a tour for the future Grizzlies, as well as present Grizzlies, where they got to tour around the campus with their parents to show them what they've done throughout the school year. Then um, prom was hosted on May 3rd at the Coconut Groove at the Boardwalk from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. And the first two hours, 
the last two hours of the people who attended prom were able to play at the arcade and laser tag for free. We also hosted on April 26 our Voz, Ritmo y Cultura, which was PBHSS talent show. And um, we had various talent shows. This was a fundraiser for our travel club, which all the students who participated were able to fundraise money through this talent show. And it was all put on by Ms. Rodriguez. Now it's time for our Grizzly highlights. We have our student of the year, of the year Ruby Romero. Ru <laughs> Go. Now we have our student banners. We have Andrea Roman Fernandez attending Stanford University, Aileen Hernandez Ruiz attending University of San Francisco, and we have Mireya Zamora Garcia attending UC Berkeley. Yeah, girl. We also have Salik Lopez Lopez attending UC Berkeley, Fernando Garcia attending UCLA. And then we also have Sin Chavez attending Cabrillo College and going to real estate. And we have Elfie Hansito going to Cabrillo to UCS, USU Monterey Bay. On May 2nd, we had our Biliteracy Award, which um, we only have AP Spanish in our school district, but this was a great way for our students to get recognized, those who passed the test. We were the highest recipients at our district with 59 Grizzlies, so we were proud of them, as well as a huge thank you to our Spanish teachers for making this possible. And last up is the upcoming events. We have PVHS Spring Concert happening May 13th, Signing Day happening May 15th, Powder Puff happening May 16th, Award Nights May 22nd, Senior Parade is June 3rd, and finally Graduation is June 5th. Thank you guys for letting PVHS present today, and go Grizzlies! Thank you, PB High and New School. I'm gonna now move us to item 4.1, the approval of agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. I have a first, can I have a second? I'll second. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any, abstain any abstaining? That will carry one, two, three, four, five, six. That will carry six, zero, one. Um, now moving to item 5.1, approval of the April 17th, 2024 special board meeting minutes. Can I have a motion to approve? Move to approve. I have a motion. Can I have a second? I'll second. I have a first. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That motion will carry 601. We will now move to item 6.1, public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address issues that are not on our agenda for this evening. Please know that the Brown Act prohibits the board from engaging in discussion for non-agendized items. However, we are listening. Per the board's policy adopted in June 2021, the board can limit public comment to a total of 30 minutes. In order to not limit the number of public speakers and in order to provide every public speaker with the opportunity to speak, each speaker will have one minute. Do we have any public comments? Yes, we do. And before we get started, I have four cards that don't have an agenda item on them. So as I read your name off, if you could please specify which item you're speaking to. Sandino Gomez. Public comment. Six one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Martha Flores. Uh, not again, Six one. Consuelo Mason. And Eddie Cervantes. Six one. Thank you. Those four individuals that I just called can come up as well as well as the following two. Bridget Phantom and Bobby Marchesal. Okay. 
All right. Good evening, Superintendent Contreras, Board President Acosta, and esteemed board members. I am Consuelo Mason, the Director of College Readiness and Dual Enrollment at Cabrillo College. I'm delighted to extend a warm welcome to Dr. Contreras in her new role as Superintendent. For the upcoming academic year, we're excited to announce an expansion of our dual enrollment offerings to include a range of general education courses aligned with PVUSD CTE uh, program and pathways. These courses include biotechnology two, psychology, communication. By broadening our offerings, we aim to provide students with a diverse and enriching educational experience. Furthermore, through our strong partnership with PVUSD, we are spearheading the implementation of the Chancellor's dual enrollment vision. The initiative will empower students to earn 12 units of college credit by high school graduation, achieved through a combination of articulated on CT courses and dual enrollment pairings. So thank you once again for your continued support and we look forward to our further collaboration. Thank you. And go Grizzlies. Good evening, my name is Dr. Eduardo Cervantes. I'm the Dean of Education Center, Assistance Education and Dual Enrollment at Cabrillo College. And I'd like to especially thank our partners at PUSD's uh, district office, in particular Peggy Pugh and Julie Edwards, who we've been working with for quite a while. In the last several years, we've expanded our dual enrollment efforts. Now, uh, thanks to our partnership centering on $3 million federal Title V grant and a statewide California Community College Chancellor's Office call to action, we've expanded dual enrollment pathways and opportunities. Our efforts are over the last few years have led to numerous accomplishments. Our dual enrollment program has been instrumental in narrowing equity gaps that once existed. Um, a testament to this has been fall 2023 when we're proud to announce that we've enrolled the greatest number of Latino dual enrollment students in the history of our program. Um, dual enrollment student success rates uh, exceed for our non-high school, excuse me, the, basically the number of, of our, our dual enrollment students are more successful than our non-dual or non-high school students. Um, we look forward to building our new dual enrollment pathways, and we're strongly committed to improving our processes and continuing to grow. And we look forward to our continued partnerships and opportunities. Thank you. Hello, uh, welcome Dr. Contreras, hello board. Um, I want to um, take a brief moment to talk about the CRE contract uh, and um, I want to say I appreciate the positive um, perspective from the board. Uh, they've shared, uh, they're impressed with I think studies program that we have in our district and um, I appreciate that. Um, the truth is we have some wonderful teachers teaching who have experienced the training and we're so grateful for it. Um, and this past year, uh, administration should have been trained and I can't tell you how much that would have benefited the students who have brilliant minds and are so capable and they have wonderful ideas but they need some support from people who can move in spaces where they're not yet able. And so I hope that uh, you could come by my room, H211. You're welcome to talk to us uh, anytime, PV High. <laughs> um, good evening, board. And thank you for those of you who are listening to the community and those who have chosen not to for whatever reason, I hope we can reach you at some point or another, have good discussions to help clarify this issue. I, of course, speak about the CRE contract. I'm a teacher who did benefit from the training, and I can, again, just to repeat myself, because repeating yourself is useful as a teacher, um, it is not, there's no anti-Semitism to be found anywhere there, and I just want that to go again on the public record. I appreciate those of you who have supported us, and I, again, hope that uh, those of you who remain closed off to the issue can open your mind and engage with the issues. It's a difficult, topic, especially right now with what's happening in Gaza. But I'm going to quote Gil Stein right here when I say, uh, legitimate criticism is Israel of Israel is not necessarily anti-Semitic. That is a direct quote from that man. And that's what 
is, if anything, that's what I believe the CRE team has done, is legitimately criticize Israel, just like we would legitimately criticize any government anywhere. In a free society, we're allowed to do that, and we should have debates, and we should have discussions about these issues, and those are the kind of things that we do in our ethnic studies classes. And if, again, I had more time, I'd tell you all about it, but come by my room anytime, K106, PV High. I'm proud to represent the ethnic studies history classes that we've built over the past couple of years. Thank you very much. It's great to see my former students here. I applaud you. What matters? Uh, welcome to our new superintendent, Dr. Contreras, to what our students say with such, jo with such joy, mi Watsonville. I want to say a heartfelt thank you to our former interim superintendent, Murray Shackman. He walked every school, and he answered the calls as we uh, approached him. And to Willie Yahiro, a huge, huge thank you, because he too walked the community for many years. His number one priority was always the students. Last time I saw you, I gave you a handout of an essay of a student who was a level three student in ELD, but was demoted to level one because of behavior. That is a concern. My own goddaughter, who was placed in a level one, uh, sixth, sixth grade level, and she's an eighth grader. My greatest concerns are the programs. Our program at EA Hall, we need to address the, how we meet the needs of our students. We need to restructure and address those needs of our students. My great concern is also EL students and migrant students. As we approach the end of the year, I see the data, and I'm not impressed that we did not fully service them. I thank you for your time and hope to see you around. And please come and see our Holocaust Wall at EA Hall. Good evening, uh, board. President, Superintendent, um, welcome. It's good to have you. Uh, it was nice uh, to get to meet you this past Wednesday and to talk for a few minutes about family and life and history. Um, I came excited to welcome you today, and I will say that as I heard your open statements, I had some concerns. And so I struggle a little bit now just uh, in that I'm hoping that I heard incorrectly because what it sounded like to me was a lot of, hey, we've got a great program. We've had some great training. Let's move forward. And I'm going to go listen to what community says about all these things. However, I know you've watched board meetings. And I know that the past eight months, the people in the classroom who are teaching, the professionals who are doing this, have spoken very clearly about the value of finishing the training with the organization that it was started with. And so I'd ask you to please listen to those who are doing it. Put trust in your teachers. And they're saying that's what we can do to be the best. I want PVUSD to be the best we can possibly be for our students. And if that's what our teachers say, please hear it. Put it on the agenda. I'm disappointed that some of those who brought this about are still refusing to comment or say anything about it. Go on the record. Have the conversation with us as your constituents and your stakeholders. Thank you. All right, next six. Jen Holtz, Desi Holtz. Sergio Medina, Yesenia Jimenez, Maria Garcia, and Jocelyn Gutierrez. Good evening, Dr. Contreras and board. My name is Jen Salinas Holtz. I work for PVUSD at two school sites, and I'm also the parent of two PVUSD students, one at Alianza Charter School and one at Watsonville High School. Um, my son at Watsonville High in 10th grade, who you'll hear from, has been very fortunate to benefit from the excellent ethnic studies program at Watsonville High. Um, I just want you to know that they have great teachers there. They are working hard to empower students to have a voice I am, you'll hear from me later, I'm also here to advocate for LGBTQ plus students and these issues are intertwined. So standing up for ethnic studies and standing up for LGBTQ plus students 
are part of the same package and uh, we need to let students have a voice and understand that their voices matter, that they can make a difference in their community. So I'm asking you, as many people here are tonight, to bring back the CRE contract to support our students' ethnic studies. Thank you. Hi, Yesenia Jimenez. My whole family is in the school district. I grew up in the school district. Um, it's, it's interesting to me, it's not on the agenda when you guys made the excuse that you were waiting for the new superintendent to have the job to, for it to be on the agenda. So put it on the agenda, please, and thank you. Um, the students, again, have been asking for this. You see how much they like the classes. Again, somebody else last time brought up how when kids enjoy the classes, they're more likely to show up for class. So if you're not showing that you support what they want to learn, why are they going to want to show up. Speaking about ethnic studies and not supporting what students want to learn, um, recently the WHEEL project, which is a partnership between the University of San Diego's ethnic studies department, brought this cool like bus with art and Chicano literature and stuff and offered it to different high schools. Watsonville High and Aptos both said yes, and the principal at PV High did not because he didn't see the relevance. Um, something, of, I'm sure if he had had the ethnic uh, studies training, then maybe he would see the relevance of bringing a, Ch a Chicano art project and literature bus to a school with mostly Latino students. So look into that principle for one, because I don't know what that was about. And also, he would have benefited from the training. Thank you. Uh, good evening, board, uh, and our new superintendent. Um, my name is Desi Salinas Holtz, and I'm a sophomore at Watsonville High School. And I'll, I'm going to keep this kind of short, but I'm here once again uh, to share my concern for the decision to not add the CRE contract back onto the agenda. Uh, I mean, there's not much to say that's not already been told by all the students, parents, families here that have come time after time to these meetings and are here again. Um, but but yeah, we've we've shared our our thoughts, our concerns, and it's clear what the students and families want, and until our voices are heard, we're gonna keep coming back here, but thank you. Hello, my name is Sergio Medina. Uh, welcome, Ms. Contreras, to the PVSD. Um, but before I talk to any of you, I'd like to thank all of you here for attending. This wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a student, it wouldn't be without the teachers and everybody here who really thinks that we deserve this and I also believe with them that we deserve this. We deserve the support to graduate, we, de we deserve the support that the teachers need teaching just as much as we do. And that's what the CRE contract did. Thanks to that contract, I fell in love with ethnic studies. I learned about all my ethnic culture and I got to know that I can, I have a voice and just because there's people like you standing here that I get to decide what I can learn doesn't mean that I can't do anything about it. And I'd just like to thank all of you again. There's only so much I can say in a minute, but just listen to us, listen to students. And I hope you have a good stay here at PUSD. Hello. Okay, hi. I'm Maria Garcia, and I this is my first time coming here. And I meant to come here uh, like a week or two ago, but I couldn't because I wasn't sure where it was, so I ended up not coming. But I just think this is amazing how long this has been going on and I don't think it's fair for us and for us to be here for this long. We're taking away our time. We could be getting ready for bed, but instead we're here getting ready. We're, some of us are having AP exams. Some of us need our sleep, but we still come here because we care about these, these classes that we have. We, we care about ethnic studies. We care about everything that we're learning about. We care that we're learning about our culture and other, other cultures. It's not just about English. It's more than that. We need to bring it back. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jocelyn. I'm a senior at Watsonville High. I'm here to talk to you about bringing the CRI country back as I can no longer take how all of my peers have come here to not only talk about bringing the CRI contract back, but as well how their voices aren't being heard. 
in my government class, we were all taught the 27 amendments and how we had to follow them. But here you are violating the first amendment of freedom of speech as you limit our time to speak our thoughts and opinion. That is institutional oppression. Not only that, but you decided to listen to what two people have to say that are not part of our school. So I just want to ask, what makes their opinion more valuable than ours? All right, next six, Emily Deorder, Arlene Abriso, Evan Jaquez, Gabriel Medina, I hope I'm saying this one right, Ziomara Perez, and Carol Turley. Good afternoon, Board of Trust, uh, Trustees. My name is Emily De Horta. I will, I'm a senior at Pajaro Valley High School today. Um, I would like to express, express my expression about traffic, uh, the traffic problems that we are facing at Pajaro Valley High School. This is a problem that's not going to go away until a solution is found, and I'm here asking you for help to find a solution. I would like a bike lane for the students so they could ride their bike safely to school and not worrying about cars running into them. I have seen students almost getting hit due to cars not being able to see them or that clearly they're in a rush on going to work, et cetera. We should pay a cross guard to manage traffic and to make sure that students are crossing safely and not in the middle of the road. Also ensuring that students, students and cars are going, you know, um, like everything's going smooth and not making sure that all this, and making sure that the students are safe. Uh, the traffic congestion impacts current students, teachers, and parents, along with having another evacuation exit. If the main exit is blocked, where else are we supposed to go? There should be multiple exits and having a safety route. And thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Arlena Alonso, and I am a student at PV. Hi. And a thing I wanted to talk about is having more electives and more classes for our students that they would like to, to take. And we also wanted to come up with a plan to make a pool and also make a theater. And we would like to have more opportunities for students to take more classes. And also I agree with the bike lane. There's a lot of students that don't have space to ride their bikes on the sidewalk, they have to ride it on the actual road, and I think that's very dangerous for the students. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Hello, members of the board. I would like to take a moment to recognize and appreciate just how many people, students in particular, are here to speak to you on the topic of CRE and ethics studies. It's 8 o'clock on a Wednesday during AP testing, This, and we're still here. We're here because we really care about our ethnic studies courses. I care about my ethnic, ethnic, my ethnic studies courses more than I've ever cared about any class, period. And I'm sure like, nearly every student in this room feels the same. My ethnic, my ethnic studies courses, which, which I've taken three of, have served a massive inspiration to me, and, I've, and they've like, changed the way I see the world. They taught me how to use my voice and to make a difference in the world. And they also taught me to think critically, something I didn't see the board do last September. Myself and other students will keep showing up until, sorry, <laughs> this conflict over CRE has dragged on unreasonably long and it's way past time that a decision was made to bring back CRE. Myself and other students will keep showing up until it is and until you show us that you listen to us. I urge the board to bring the topic of CRE back to vote and approve it. Thank you. Hello and good evening. My name is Xiomara Perez and I am a second generation student at Pajaro Valley High School. I'm advocating for a theater to be built at PV. Pajaro Valley High has so much potential among its students and faculty that the lack of fa facilities prevents the students from showcasing their talents and school spirit. A theater would allow its students to host events, showcase theater productions, and provide a space for community building. Due to lacking facilities, theater arts students struggle to produce a theatrical production in a 35 capacity classroom. Adding a theater facility to PV is an equitable choice, ensuring the future Grizzlies have the space and capacity to showcase their culture and talents. I recently 
performed in the Voz Ritmo y Cultura talent show and was disappointed that we couldn't host the show in the home of the Grizzlies. Instead, we performed at the Henry J. Mello Center in the Wildcats' home. Furthermore, the students and faculty at Pajaro Valley High School would greatly appreciate the implementation of the theater. Thank you and good night. Hello everyone, Gabriel Medina. Sorry, my voice is like going, but uh, District 3. Um, I am both moved and inspired by the passion to which these young adults, our future leaders, are advocating for their educational rights. They bring not only their concerns, but also their innovation, ideas to the forefront, challenging us to rethink our approach to governance and leadership. These young voices who represent a generation often let down by unresponsive political systems are now demanding to be heard. It's essential to recognize that they are more than just students. These are educators teaching us about accountability, transparency, and most importantly, community engagement. According to a recent study, over 60% of young adults believe that political engagement is crucial to enacting change, yet only 23% feel that their voices are genuinely considered by those in power. Great example right here. We are at a critical conjuncture with the traditional ways of operating can no longer be the default. So today I stand before you, not just as a concerned citizen, you're gonna love this Soto, be, because as a challenger, I will be challenging you because I grew up in Las Lomas. So, and I openly you, and I openly Soto invite you to a debate hosted by the Pajaronian. You are because you are hiding up. behind you a silent wall, and, and we I need actually want to hear what you Thank you. I'd just like to take a moment to remind the community that this is time for public comment on the district. It is not time for politics. They do not belong in the boardroom no longer than they do belong in a city council meeting. Thank you. Ms. Turley, you're up. Good evening, my name is Carol Turley, candidate for trustee area two. Dr. Cervantes, welcome to the Pajaro Valley. You have stepped into an amazing community. You have a staff that works for you that's made up of some wonderful people who care deeply about the children of our valley. Despite the consternation amongst the board, I hope that you find this to be the fabulous place that those of us who are here know it to be. Welcome. All right, next six. Marcus Castro, Logan Markham, Alexis Hernandez, Alyssa Rangel, Christian Martinez, and Daniel Galaviz. It's getting hot in here, huh? <laughs> How you guys feeling? Okay, I just wanna thank everybody for being here. I love the fact that community gets to come together and speak because this is where power comes from. When you kids believe in who they are and where they come from and stand up for their community, the community grows. So thank you all for being here because this makes a difference. Imagine a room full of hundreds of people like this. All, all the differences we wanna be made will be made. My name is Marcus Castro. Hello, board. I'm here with, well one, I live in Salinas, California, uh, but I'm also here with a national uh, Association of African American Parents and Youth, which is basically an organization that helps represent and bring advocacy for African and also melanated brown students across the uh, diaspora, really, uh, across the nation. So um, I'm here to really represent Salinas and also Monterey County and also Santa Cruz County to bring this kind of awareness to students and have a, for kids to have a uh, mentorship and the ability to have someone speak up for them and believe in them and encourage them to do what they're doing here today because we need that. We need that. We need more leaders in our community that bring the kids up so they become the leaders we always wanted them to be. So we have a place where 
where we're living in where we're living in prosperity and where we're living in a place where we feel good to be here and not that we have to fight against Thanks, people Marcus. that we don't have the, the right positions. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm a student at Pajaro Valley High School, and um, I've come here to speak about one of the biggest problems I feel that's on campus at Pajaro Valley, and that's the fact that we don't have a theater, uh, or a, um, yeah, a theater. And um, I myself am in uh, the theater classes at PV, and not only just theater that needs, uh, not only the theater department at PV needs like a theater arts building, but also banned as well because um, PV has to work on Watsonville's time and work on if, like on Watsonville's time. And um, I feel if Watsonville High and Pajaro Valley High both have their own performing arts centers, that could be more events for Watsonville as a city as a whole. And if there's two different schools with like different performing arts centers, there could be different events at different times in, in yeah. Hi again. Um, my name is Christian Martinez. I am a senior at Watsonville High. Um, I want to call attention to comments made by Oscar Soto on March 27th at the school board meeting. Oscar Soto made a comment that night referring to a teacher that wouldn't, let, that wouldn't let him speak Spanish in the class, saying, for someone to come and tell me that I can't speak Spanish, it kind of sticks with you, especially as a kid. Well, let me tell you now that for someone to come and tell us that we cannot study our culture and learn the history of our people, well, that kind of sticks with us, and I hope our message sticks with you when you are voted out of your seat. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the hypocrisy of telling us to quiet down or else the meeting would be canceled after we peacefully chanted, yet the board made absolutely no remarks to when Gil Stein got in front of a young woman's face after she called out his racist remarks. It is clear that the board does not care for that it is clear that the board does not care about our community and our cause, so I urge you to realign your values. And Superintendent Contreras, I hope you make the right call and stand by us, and you too will be a part of our community. Finally, support the PBH students and support our janitors. Our bathrooms are disgusting and we need them to be fixed. Thank you. Okay. Hello, board. My name is Alyssa Richard and Helen. I am a senior at Watsonville High, and, and ethnic studies has impacted my life greatly. All of the ethnic studies teachers have made their classes an excellent place to learn, no matter how much training they have had in part thanks to CRE. Not once have I been taught nor seen a single ounce of anti-Semitism in the CRE contract, so that claim is a gross statement and quite frankly an insult. There is no reason to not reinstate CRE other than ignorance or blatant disrespect. We don't matter to the board. All that matters to them are voters so they can play politics. Dr. Contreras, the community please ask you to help us and make this issue a priority. Board, if you want to prove me wrong, bring back CRE. And I want to thank Mr. Pels, my ethnic study, studies teacher, for making a great environment to learn about CRE and bring back CRE again. Sorry. All right. Hello, board. My name is Dan Galaviz. This is my first time attending this meeting. Uh, I come here because I was inspired by my my class, my, my school, my community, standing up for CRE. And that just really inspires me, their dedication and their persistence. Your denial to the CRE contract is just one of the problems affecting the PBUSD. Racism, sexual assaults, and pedophilia run in this district with you in charge. For you not to listen to us just shows idiocracy and shows plain ignorance. If votes are your true worry, no, most of us would be 18 by November and we will vote you out. Good evening. Uh, my name is Alexis Hernandez. I'm, a, I'm also a senior of Watsonville High. Well, I, I believe that ethnic studies has had a huge impact on, our, on the lives of the students being taught that subject. As you can see, like the support it has, it's inspiring, and um, 
it, it helps us understand our ancestry and understand the systematic oppressions that we still suffer from and how our families have overcome them, even though the odds have been stacked against them for over like a decade now, or like over our decades. And I believe like we should bring back the CRT, the CRE, and um, also we should raise uh, teacher salaries because they get paid like pennies in comparison to the work they've done. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Our next six, Luis Aguilar, Austin Martin, Ayana Villegas, Emiliano Rios, Miguel Martinez, and Bella Martinez. Hello and good evening board and welcome Dr. Heather Contreras to the district. I just wanna echo everyone's concerns, our educated teachers, our students, our families and parents and everyone's request to bring the CRE contract back. This is your community that you represent. We're simply asking for you to listen to us and it's that simple. Just listen to the community that you are representing. And I wanna echo Takashi Mizuno's um, request for Trustee Kim DeSerpa to make a formal apology to Professor Allison Tintagano Kubales. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. In a culturally culturally responsible manner, immediately. It is Asian American Pacific Islander Month. Correct your wrongs, write your mistakes, and apologize and listen to your community. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, um, my name is uh, Luis Aguilar, and uh, I'm here to talk about the uh, renewal of the uh, ethnic studies contract. Um, <clears throat> uh, not renewing the contract means that um, the ethnic uh, classes uh, will get watered down so much that uh, it won't be an ethnic studies class anymore. And um, that's bad because um, I have a sister that wants to take the ethnic uh, studies class next year, and I'll be like, oh, that's, you know, if it's still there, which it is, but it's just. The teachers won't be gonna get um, the taught they need, but um, yeah, it, the class has taught me a lot, and uh, I just um, uh, yeah, I wanted to come here and ask you guys to bring it back, and I, I wanted to shout out uh, Mr. Pels, cause uh, that man keeps it a hundred, and uh, I have a message to the uh, new superintendent. Um, just look at the board members that are you know talking back and who aren't talking back to the community, and I just wanted to say that Flores, Acosta, and Soto may be trustees, but they're not trusted. All right, goodbye. Um, hello again, my name is Austin Martin. I'm here again to speak about the CRE contract. First, I would like to speak to our new superintendent, Dr. Contreras first. First, I ask you to look back at the past board meetings and look at this amount of crazy support we have for the CRE contract. We are in this conference room today because we had to increase the maximum capacity because so many people showed up at the last board, me last board meetings and support for this contract. Not only that, but we have supported this contract through emails sent to, to trustee members or trustee on the board to please bring back the CRE contract. So please, I ask you to bring it back on the agenda. I know you guys waited until the new superintendent was in office or in sitting down until you guys could uh, speak on it. Well, she's here now, so I please ask you to speak on it. And I please ask you to listen to your community, listen to the students that are actually taking the ethnic studies and the teachers. We want this contract, please bring it back, add it back to the agenda. Thank you. Um, hello, board. My name is Ayana Vegas Carlos, and I just wanted to say that the board has shown us time and time again that they don't care about us, and they really don't. And in no way is that an exaggeration either. All they care about are votes, not their community. This isn't about us to them. No, we will get voters from your areas on our side. We will let the people know that you don't care about us, our education. Many seniors, many of my senior classmates here today will be 18 November and know that we will be voting but that we will not be voting in your favor, and neither will our families. Do not slander the CRE with 
anti-Semitic with the anti-Semitic cover. Some of these people on the board simply just do not like the ethnic literature and studies class and what it represents, our voices, our culture. I hope our new superintendent can address this as a priority and hear our voices unlike the board. Dr. Contreras, help us with this issue and bring back CRE. Good evening. Uh, I'm here in support to bring back the CRE contract. Around three years ago, I was a victim of direct racism and verbal abuse. At the time, I did not know how much of a target of racism I was until after the incident. Ethnic studies has made me realize how important it is as a minority living in the United States to be educated in this kind of oppression. Ethnic studies exposed me to a lot of different safe ways to deal with this kind of problem instead of violence. I look behind me in this room and see people like me, people that have mostly gone through the same situation that I have. I look in front of me and see oppressors, oppressors who want to silence us like how you have always done. We are tired of asking and wishing. We are here demanding you bring back the CRE contract. I, among others, are tired of learning and listening to your white history. Where is my history and where is ours? Thank you. All right, next six, Emilio Leon, Chris Webb, Takashi Mizuno, Christine Hong, Omar Diekas, and Cuauhtemoc. Dr. Contreras, welcome to PVSD. Um, I've served as a social studies teacher at Renaissance for nine years, including this year. Um, I appreciate your initial remarks to the community and your operating style thus far. It's my hope that you will bring greater authenticity, that your actions and those of your subordinates will live up to the messaging being delivered to the public, the districts trying to make up their own rules with the contract and subsequently stealing teachers' PN days, in the context of the messaging for this year, PVSD serves with joy, trust, and belief, is a per striking example of this inconsistency. The other one would be the uh, um, Asian American resolution. Please help heal our community. Score some easy wins for yourself. Cease all use of PVSD funds to fight the teachers in court to steal our PN days. Also, hear our students' reasonable requests and arrange a special board meeting to restore the CRE contract, or at least present evidence to support otherwise baseless accusations. Let's hear PVUSD's definition. Let's hear the board's definition of anti-Semitism therein, along with non-examples. Thank you for being here, Dr. Congreras. Oh, <clears throat> good evening. I'm Takashi, District uh, 2. Oh, dear trustee Kim De Serpa, as an Asian American member of the PBUSD community and a former member of the PBUSD Ethnic Studies Community Collaborative Committee, I'm submitting my formal complaint regarding your actions, especially about your, how unjustly you offended Professor Allison, a respected Filipino American professor of Asian American studies, by calling her anti Semitic which led the board to not renew the third year contract with community responsible education in the board meeting on September 17, 2023. My complaint is based on my view that you breached the PBSD resolution denouncing hate crimes and racism against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders communities, which was unanimously adopted by the PBUSD Board of Trustees uh, 2021. And Pre President Acosta, I'm you in your district. How can we vote for you in the up upcoming election in November? I'm Christine Hong, welcome. Um, we've repeatedly been asking you, where's the evidence behind the inflammatory accusations you endorsed against Alison Tintiangu Kubales? You have not been able to produce any. She co-chaired an advisory council that produced a state model curriculum that included within ethnic studies mention of Palestine, that dared recognize that Palestine is occupied, that the form of colonialism visited upon the Palestinian people is settler colonial in nature, and that 
that the racialized confinement of Palestinian people in the occupied territories represents apartheid. But because of pro-Israel political mobilization at the state level, Palestine was entirely expunged from the curriculum and the order of knowledge. We've seen locally the weaponization of anti-Semitism to repress any dissent and any critique of the state of Israel. What is the purpose of education? Right now, Israel has closed the Rafah crossing. It's positioned to wage a full-blown genocidal assault continuing this against a captive people. And I refuse to consent to a definition of anti-Semitism that renders it impermissible you, to imagine Palestine. I just want to first start off with everyone who doesn't feel represented by the board, can you please raise your hands and keep it up? It's time for every board member to understand the simple truth. If you're not standing with the people, you will rep be replaced. You see, the biggest mistake you can see is merely seeing us as votes rather than residents of Watsonville. But let me be clear. If all you care about is securing a vote, then be prepared to face the consequences. The people of Watson will unite and put someone in your place who truly stands for us. We will shine a light on the disrespect you've shown and the voices you've silenced. Don't forget, you should have been trying to win over the youth. Many of us will be turning 18 by November, and all of us will vote against you. So board members, hear this. The power lies between the people. Let us make sure our voices echo loudly and decisively come election day. Together we will ensure that our community's needs are not just heard, but prioritized. Thank you. My name is Omar Diegues. I'm here with Barrios Unidos from Santa Cruz. Uh, I went to Aptos High School. 20 years ago, 20 something plus years ago, I was the first wave of students that was bused from Watsonville for overcrowding all the way to Aptos, where we had to deal with segregation, uh, bringing, we fought for ethnic studies, uh, we fought for uh, equal rights for us, and it might, it's very mind boggling to me to, to see that we're still fighting for this today. Uh, if there's one thing that I want you guys to get tonight, is please write this word down. It's S-I-T-Y. Stop ignoring the youth. We are here to represent them. We will keep coming back and we will fight for them and give them a voice. Please listen to the youth. Mark Luengas, Eli Davies, Dr. Barasa, Isel Barasa, Jessica Gonzalez, and Nat Lowe. Good evening, board. I'm Eli, and oh yes, also Superintendent Contreras. Can't forget you. You're the reason we're all hopeful. I use they, them pronouns. I'm here to urge you to put the CRE contract renewal on the agenda and vote to renew. Ethnic studies is facing opposition all over the country. This board has a duty to its students to uphold a strong ethnic studies program. Superintendent Contreras, this is the last year for the impeccable work CRE brought, at which point the foundation that has been built will be solidified. The ethnic studies classes are widely loved and respected for a reason. Look at the passion of these students. Don't let them down. The choice is yours, Superintendent Contreras. Stand with the students and community or stand with the board that has disregarded them for the entire school year.
Hello, Board of Trustees. I am here again fighting for the renewal of the CRE contract because the board won't listen once again. I am here to talk to Superintendent Contreras. You've seen the work our community has done to bring back the CRE contract. You stated that you've been learning more about this issue, but is that really true? You only stated that PBUSD has these programs, but never stated to bring back the CRE contract. Are we really trying to help the community, or is, or is it just a facade? If you, help, if you want to help the community, you should stand with us. If you won't stand with us, we will eventually bring someone that will help us. Either stand with the students and community, or stand with the people opposing white supremacy. You choose. Hello, my name is Ishan. I've been here seven times. Seven times, that's ridiculous. I'm running out of things to say. Aren't you supposed to be representing us? Why can't you listen to us? Instead of getting sleep, we're here late at night. You know that we have to wake up early in the morning for school or work, but you choose to ignore us. You are purposely dragging this out just because you don't want kids to learn about inequality and power structures that keep people of color down. By ignoring us, you're ensuring that you will not be elected again. Listen Listen to us, bring back CRE. Dr. Contreras, w will you stand with us or with an, if, with an inactive board? Good evening, I'm Dr. Barraza. Uh, uh, welcome Superintendent Contreras and Board of Trustees. I'm here once again to advocate for the CRE contract to be renewed. When I hear some of you say ethnic studies is something that should be taught at home, uh, it gives me a clear indication that you have no idea what ethnic studies is. Ethnic studies is not about teaching your cultural traditions. It's about teaching ethnic justice. It's about teaching ethnic history and the power structures that keep ethnic people down. Um, so it's been almost uh, a whole school year, and some of you still have not bothered to educate yourselves on what ethnic studies is. Some of you have even said you're tired of hearing of CRE, or you're bored of hearing of our concerns. What you're basically telling us is that you don't care about your constituents' concerns, and you don't want to hear from us nor learn from us. Why would we want, why would we want people who think that way on the board? You are ignoring the most important people you're supposed to represent, the students. That's why you have that job, because you're representing Presenting the students and yet you're ignoring them. And Dr. Contreras, I just have one question for you. Will you stand with the community or will you stand with an unresponsive board who says they're tired of our concerns and bored from hearing, from hearing from us? Your actions will tell us. And just so you know, I modeled for you how to support students. I was here with two students that needed that support. Thank you, Dr. Rob. My name is Nat Lowe, um, Superintendent Contreras. Welcome to the district. We are excited to work with you. Um, I want to say that the school board has not set you up for success because they've used you as a stalling tactic mm -hmm. against bringing back the CRE contract, even though they've had the entire academic year to work with Superintendent Sheckman on this. So now you get to deal with the impacts of their actions while you don't actually have a vote on the board. Last meeting, the board um, passed an AAPI Heritage Month resolution promising resources to support curricula for our community, even though they took away the resource that they already had, that the teachers already had by dropping CRE. And again, they are leaving you to try and reconcile their words with the district's actions. This is an amazing community. It's a passionate community. We are asking you to make a choice. Stand with the community or fall in line with the board that shows that they don't respect us or even their own bylaws. And if you stand with us, we will have your back. I suggest that you look at what happened when Acosta and Soto tried to fire the last superintendent. Hello board, my name is Jessica Gonzalez and I'm here again to talk about the CRE contract. There's really not much to say since we all have given our opinion, but you guys aren't listening to us. As of right now, I can see um, Acosta just like, you know, you know, not listening. Um, there's really not much to say, I mean, never mind. Um, how is it that you guys won't listen to the students and teachers when they're the ones who are being affected by your choices? Aren't we supposed to work as a community in order to move forward? This is what we call institutional oppression, putting down a group of individuals who don't have the same power as you guys. But when we all come together, as you can see around the room, we can continue to fight for what we want and we will continue to do so. 
Dr. Contreras, you have mentioned that you are going to look, listen, and learn. Well, look, students are here once again fighting. Listen to what they have to say and learn what happens when you don't listen to them. We will keep fighting until you bring back the CRE contract. Our right, next six, Kels Jacobs, Ellen Garfield, Luca R, Joe H, Max, Max Barraza, and Sofia Gomez. Good evening, board. I come here as a member of the Jewish community to advocate for the renewal of the Ethnic Studies program and contract with CRE. I feel anger and remorse that the unsubstantiated claims of anti-Semitism contributed to a halt in this program, a program that's purpose is to uplift and empower this passionate community. I would just like to add my voice as a Jew that I do not agree with the claims of anti-Semitism, that criticism of Israel is not anti-Semitism, and yet it is profoundly needed right now. And I hope deeply that this community, community be granted back this powerful tool towards collective liberation. Thank you. Hello, my name is Luca and I am an educator in Santa Cruz County. I am also Jewish. I am here to strongly support the students who are advocating for the ethnic studies program to be reinstated. There have been false claims that the curriculum is anti-Semitic. I am here to emphasize that teaching about Palestine and being critical of Israel is not anti-Semitic. Students deserve to learn about their histories and cultures. I urge you to listen to the students. They represent hope for our futures. Please do not let the unfounded political agenda of a few people get in the way of young people's desire to learn. Thank you. Good evening again, school board members, and hello to Superintendent Contreras. Superintendent, thank you for responding to my letter. My name is Ellen Garfield, and I'm a member of the Santa Cruz Jews for a Free Palestine. I'm here to support the courageous students who want the ethnic studies contract reinstated. They deserve to learn about their own histories through their highly trained teachers. It's been looked at very closely, and there's nothing anti-Semitic about the curriculum. I've had enough of my religion being weaponized to serve right-wing intentions of destroying diversity programming. These students should have to deal with these clowns. I'm sorry. Reinstate the contract immediately. Thank you. Hello. Hello. My name is Joe, and I'm a resident of Santa Cruz County. I'm here as a queer Filipino Jew to speak in support of the students fighting for the CRE contract. I am not currently an educator, but I am currently enrolled in a credential program, and I could be a teacher in this school district in just a year's time. I would not teach at a school, for example, where I could not teach evolution. As a queer person, I would not teach at a school where you cannot say gay. And as a Jewish person, I cannot stand by a school that represses marginalized voices in the name of false anti-Semitism claims. As a Jew, I reaffirm that anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism, teaching about Palestine is not anti-Semitism, and there is nothing in the ethnic studies curriculum that resembles anti-Semitism. The repression of an educational curriculum that centers the struggles of historically marginalized communities upholds white supremacy. I ask you to listen to your students and reinstate the ethnic studies contract. All right. Good evening, board. I'm here once again to advocate for the renewal of the CRE contract. I want to direct this message to you, Superintendent Contreras. It's your first time here, and first impressions are very important. Some members of this board have opposed the community for almost an entire school year. Some are even bored of this whole situation, wanting us to quiet down rather than to listen to us. We aren't going away. And every time you avoid us, you're putting your position at risk. For example, due to the surplus actions, we will make sure Kristen Brown wins the position of supervisor. President Acosta's inaction will give rise to future trustee Carol Turley. And Soto, you have already found out who will replace you. <laughs> 
now that you know this, the real question arises, Superintendent Contreras, will you listen to the community or will you put your newly gained position at risk? Thank you. Hello and good evening, Board of Trustees. It appears I have to be here once again. At this point, you guys look bored. You look disengaged. You look like you'd rather be somewhere else. Nevertheless, we're still showing up. You're not stopping us. You know what I see a perfect example from you guys? White supremacy, patriarchy, both excellent things ethnic study informed me about. Ethnic studies taught me one of my most important lessons of my life, that everything is connected. Right off the top of my head, I can name multiple red flags I've seen from you all these past few months, and I'm aware of their existence because of my ethnic studies courses. I won't be naming them all right now, seeing as you cut our time to one minute, but I will say you're failing your community. And for Dr. Contreras, you seem like a very nice woman. I enjoyed meeting you today. Please stand with us to bring back CRE. And for Costa, Kim De Serpa, and Oscar Soto, we will vote you out. Thank you. Our next six, Gabriel Barraza, Daisy Solis, Omar Jimenez, Maria Martinez, uh, Jesus Raboso and Bobby Peltz. First, I want to say welcome, Dr. Contreras, to the district. I keep writing speeches, but I keep throwing them out because there's nothing that I can say that hasn't been said by these wonderful speakers here today. You know, this is an example of what ethnic studies does. It educates people about power structures, which is why people like Trustee Acosta, Trustee Soto, and others are so scared of liberated ethnic studies. It challenges power structures. It gives people tools to navigate those structures and to dismantle them so that the power lies with the people which is what this country in its founding documents says, we the people, in order to form a more perfect union. We govern ourselves, but we only govern with the consent of the governed. And when you stop listening to the people, you lose power eventually, and you will. Thank you. I am, I am Jesus Vallejo, I am a student at PV High. I am currently in the theater program, and at this point, I think y'all know what I'm, about at, what I'm here to talk about. We need an auditorium. Y'all have heard about this at nauseum, and at this point, if y'all tired of hearing it, we're tired of talking about it. All right. We had Voices with Cultura a couple weeks ago. Students had to go across the map from our school to Watsonville High in order to rehearse and in order to perform. Plays have to be done in a room smaller than this one. In the cafeteria, they have to do the, the folklorical dances. We got so many talented students that work, on their, that work on their craft, actors, dancers, musicians, and th this is how we're limiting them. This is necessary. This, our current drama teacher went to, our, went to this school, second year ever graduating there and they didn't have an auditorium, we don't have one now. And I don't want to come back here a couple years from now to hear that my little cousin has to come up here and give y'all the same speech. But of course, y'all would rather waste time talking about getting rid of CRE. Like, I know absolute power corrupts absolutely or whatever, but y'all got crumbs of power and are moving like Marie Antoinette. Please, do y'all jobs. That is all. Good evening, Board of Trustees and Superintendent Dr. Contreras. I'm Maria Martinez, I'm a, se a senior at PV, and I'm here to talk about the importance of bringing back patient care as a CTA course for PV High. Many students are interested in going to, into a medical field, and this class will prepare them for such careers. I was interested in taking this class this year, but it was canceled. I understand that it's difficult finding a teacher for this class, but I urge you to find a, a teacher for next year. Although I'm graduating this year, I would like future students to have the opportunity that I never had. Thank you for listening, and I hope you take my request into consideration.
Hi, my name is Daisy Solis. I'm from Power Valley High School, and I'll be talking about school safety. I feel like we should bring back police officers back to campus because we have had issues in the past where students don't feel safe in their own class nor school's restroom, which are both places where students and staff should feel safe in. On this occasion, I have siblings that are going to come to Power Valley High School, and I wouldn't want them to have the thought of their lives being on risk because of people there threatening and bringing illegal positions to school. Please make sure to bring back police officers next school year, and thank you. Good evening, my name is Omar Jimenez, and I'm here to talk about the importance of having more CTE courses at PV. Since you guys have given Watsonville and Aptos way more opportunities than we have, for example, it would be nice to have agricultural mechanics, cooking, and medical classes. Although I am a senior, I would, still, I would have still enjoyed having those classes, so I would encourage you to look into this and find teachers who are interested to teach those classes for future generations. And I sure hope I actually see you guys doing this, because I don't want to come back here and talk about how I can keep going and going on. And you guys aren't even listening to the community for other problems. Thank you. I haven't started talking yet. Reset it. Reset, 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 reset. I haven't started speaking yet. Bobby Pell, teacher at Watsonville High. Superintendent Contreras, our young people have done their best to make their voices heard on the CRE contract. They emailed the board, but they got very few emails back. They invited the board to their classrooms, but no one showed up. They come to speak directly to the board, but keep getting cut off at one minute. Members of this board have demonstrated time and time again that they do not care what our youth have to say. But despite their disrespect, our young folks are still here. They continue to show up. They continue to hold their signs high. They continue to speak truth to power because that's what leaders do. Super con Superintendent Contreras, the true leaders of this community are not the out of touch board members that are sitting up there with you. The true leaders of our community are the inspiring young people down here with me. I am so proud of them. They are ethnic studies. Look, listen, and learn from these leaders of tomorrow. Support ethnic studies. Bring back CRE. Thank you. Our right, last four. Elias Gonzalez, Melissa Michelle, Matt Wettstein, and Marilyn, or Marilyn Garrett. Good evening, board members. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to you tonight about a topic that is personally important to me. I am Elisa Michel, and I am a senior at Pajaro Valley and getting ready to graduate. The district CT classes are intended to give high school high school students opportunity to learn about possible careers. I want my future career to be a registered nurse and we used to have a class to prepare us for this specific career. The patient care class at PV High was a popular for, for students interested in the medical field. This class is no longer offered at my school and PV High students no longer have equitable access. Please do whatever you can to bring this class back to PV so that future students can have the same opportunities I had to be introduced to careers in the medicine. Thank you for considering this and for giving me this opportunity to bring this issue to your attention. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Contreras. Welcome to the district. I'm Matt Wettstein and I'm proud to be the president of Cabrillo College. I want to thank you for joining our community and uh, wish you luck and look forward to working with you on many different things. Uh, I also want to thank your staff, your teachers, your district staff, and also the, the staff throughout the high schools and uh, elementary schools. We partner with Pajaro Valley Unified on many, many things. We're proud to do it. Eddie and Consuelo mentioned earlier our dual enrollment partnerships. Uh, we're so grateful to be strengthening those. 
we partner on adult education and, and your district takes the lead on offering those courses throughout our, our region. Uh, we are so glad to partner with you on career education, on guided pathways, on the K-16 Central Coast Collaborative, which I know you'll be joining soon. We look forward to working with you in many, many ways. And I just want to say tonight to the student speakers, um, they make me proud to be the president of Cabrillo and see what they represent for our future. Thank you. Uh, good evening, board. Uh, welcome, Dr. Contreras. Uh, thank you for your response. I look forward to meeting with you and welcoming to your space. Uh, today, I'm here as a community member and a father, right? Uh, but uh, I'm not going to, but yeah, I'm here to support uh, the community and asking the board to bring back the CRE contract. I won't go into the extent that everybody has gone into, but for me, I think I want to highlight, uh, this is more than just about ethnic studies, right? This is about actually talking about the exposure rates, the suspension rates in our schools and that are extremely high in PVUSD. This is about uh, the youth on probation that come from the PVUSD. This is about uh, the number of youth that are being incarcerated from the city of Watsonville, right? This is about the school to prison pipeline that we're actually just feeding into right here. So just want to bring that up. But again, for me, I think I just want to say that much. Um, but I think I want, I want to stand. Ah. That, I just want to stand behind the community uh, and to bring back this uh, CRE contract. But I think lastly, what I want to sit there and say is I hope that we do not confuse the emotions of the community with disrespect, right? This is what happens, unfortunately, when we don't listen to community. Uh, this is what happens, but this is what leadership looks like. Thank you very much. Marilyn Garrett, I taught last 20 years of my career in this school district. I advocate for health and well-being, calling for halt to pesticide use when I was part of Farm Without Harm, and I warn about the dangers of Wi-Fi radiation today, and I applaud the students. You're just fabulous. I want to recommend a source of information, KPFA, listener-supported radio, kpfa.org, from one of the programs called Law and Disorder on April 13th. The author of the book, Towers of Ivory and Seal, how Israel, Israeli universities deny Palestinians freedom. I talked about the disbursement and displacement of Palestinians, military academy industrial complex, and that Israel has brutally destroyed academic education in Palestine, destroyed libraries, books, buildings, staff, students, and she gave the statistics. And what's going you, on Marilyn. there, let me finish the sentence play here, mirrors the extension of Palestinian repression. What's happening on U.S. campuses today is what's Marilyn, happening. Marilyn, that's time. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. And your agenda says two minutes. Do we have any other public speakers? Do we have any of the public speakers? That was the last one. All right. The board will take a three-minute recess at this time. I'm now going to call the meeting back to order. I'm going to need everyone to take your conversations outside so we can reconvene the board meeting so we can conduct the board's, the district's business. I'm now going to call on item 7-1. We are moving to item seven, employee organization comments. Now is the time that we hear from our employee organizations. Each will have five minutes. 7.1, do we have Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers here this evening? Do we have anyone from PVFT to speak? Yes, we do. You got applause tonight. Good evening, board, President of Costa and Dr. Contreras. Um, I want to extend um, um, uh, 
uh, our gratitude from our membership um, for your welcoming nature and dedicating a time to host a meet and greet last Thursday specifically for the PBFT. Um, I know many of our members are feeling end of the year tired, um, as many are still navigating the SBAC testing and any other kind of end of the year testing, and it takes a toll on our young scholars as well. Um, and I also want to extend um, thanks to Trustee Acosta for setting up a meeting with Dr. Contreras, uh, CSEA, CWA, and ourselves, um, the PBFT, to begin a conversation. And we hope that it does become a regular uh, labor partnership committee uh, that we can, a meeting that we could do monthly even. Um, so I want to read just a small segment, just a section of what our PBFT's message to our members regarding teacher appreciation um, week this, um, this week, which is teacher appreciation week. Amidst, so something that we sent out, something that was a longer message. Amidst the complexities of navigating transitions such as changes in leadership, your steadfast dedication to your students remains unwavering. Your impact is evident when our students return to visit us. They are a testament to how you are shaping our society's future one student at a time. And as a union, we stand in solidarity with you, advocating for your rights and supporting your needs. Together, we will continue to champion the cause of education and ensure that your voices are heard. So that's a piece that we wrote to our membership. And so when we speak about the union, when, it, when, we, when we speak, when the union, us, when we speak to our members, um, and we use the word you, that also implies our students and community. You've heard me many times tell you that we negotiate for the adults that are educating our students, but we don't work in silos, we don't exist in silos. And I think my seventh grade students were able to, um, uh, sum it up pretty well when they said, oh, Ms. Vaquera, teachers are the keystone species in schools. Because without them, we're not getting the proper um, guidance in our educational journey. So, and this is because we firmly believe that there is a symbiotic re relationship with the learning community. We feel the impact when somebody is in need. So this, so this also being mental health um, month, we want to address the importance of being reflective of systems that impact one's mental health, such as continually to deny bringing back the CRE consulting contract to this board to accept. Destigmatizing mental health by normalizing the practice of taking moments to prioritize mental health care without guilt, shame, or penalty for taking a day off is really important. Um, it's also uh, the color for Mental Health Awareness Month is green. And um, no, we did not match. If you know what I'm referring to, people, Roddy, I know you're watching, um, I'm not going to be matching uh, outfits with anybody. Um, that was just coincidence. So, we have so much pride. The PBFT has so, so much pride in our students who are just radiating. They're just so lit right now with just amazing energy as they are advocating for their rights to an education that they deserve in this community. And um, this movement is amazing and I love it. Um, and because it's for the all the right reasons. And um, I'm really like disappointed that I heard that this is not a space for political speech. Uh, hello, we're in public education. Who do you think funds it? Who do you think elects you? This is a political space and um, our students and teachers and any other uh, community member, they have the right, just like Dr. Contreras gave the, um, uh, the Jewish community some space to meet, I'm hoping that she's gonna give Dr. Tintiango Gubales some space to meet because I'm, I'm going to um, stay on the side of hope and, and hope that she is just listening. This is part of her listening bit. Um, 
so I'll get back to, I had to add some stuff because I heard so many amazing things. So we have faith in the dedication that the educators and support staff have in our learning community and we have hope that your look, listen and learn tour throughout this district will bear positive collaborative movement forward. So it was a chill one tonight, but I'm listening too. Thank you, PBFT. 7.2, Classified School Employees Association. Do we have anybody from CSEA here tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on to 7.3, Pajaro Valley Association of Managers. Pavam. Good evening, uh, President Acosta, trustees, Dr. Contreras, members of cabinet. Um, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. My name is Rich Moran. I'm joined here by Mr. Rich Ariana. He'll be speaking shortly. Um, we're delighted to share the work of the Pajaro Valley Association of Managers, or PAVAM for short, your leadership team. Um, PAVAM members are always on the move in support of our students, families, staff, and community. So currently, my colleagues and I are busy planning for professional learning for the coming school year. Uh, once again, we're collaborating across departments with community partners to ensure that our instructors have opportunities for professional learning that will help them meet the needs of our learners and support their growth as professionals. Choices include um, options for K through, two, K through two literacy, equitable grading, direct ELD, and AVID for both elementary and secondary. Um, also, as a leadership team, we continue to bolster our abilities to understand and utilize the MTSS framework at every level in our system. This helps us to guide and actually to um, realize our mission to guide school communities to provide appropriate social emotional supports, behavioral structures, academic instruction, and comprehensive interventions, ensuring all students have equitable access to the services and resources necessary to thrive. This work is being led by district leadership team. We're implementing professional learning for our colleagues during the 23-24 school year, and it will continue through the 24-25 school year. Uh, good evening, Rich Ariano, Director of Purchasing, and uh, I'm just here to um, share that I'm always proud to collaborate uh, with our um, educational services team members. Uh, purchasing, it's, it's usually all about buying stuff and finding things. and. Um, we work together to develop uh, a system to help our schools have a more streamlined, streamlined process for ordering uh, instructional materials for fall, something that's a lot more user friendly and um, kind of you know, developed with the uh, intent of making it easier on their lives so that we can get them the things that they need. And um, yeah, we're always working to build a system that allows for uh, improved communication again, streamlining and then developing and maintaining a system that's gonna make us uh, more financially responsible to our schools, our, in our district, and our community. Uh, just thank you again for having us. It's been a pleasure to speak, and um, it's a pleasure to continue to contribute uh, our efforts and our leadership to the students, staff, and community of Pajaro Valley Unified School District. So thank you very much. Thank you both. Moving to 7.4, Communication Workers of America, CWA, or Substitute Teachers Union. Do we have anyone here this evening? Good evening. Welcome. Thank you, President Acosta, Dr. Contreras, and the board. Good evening. Um, Mike Floor, I'm a steward for CWA. I'm also a substitute, an LPAC tester, an after school employee, all the positions that CWA is sort of representing. I've done them all for years. Um, this is gonna be kind of brief tonight. I just wanted to show my appreciation for the consideration that I've been shown from especially President Acosta. Um, we talked quite a bit at the meet and greet. It was lovely meeting you, Dr. Contreras. I really feel that it was an authentic interaction and that the stuff that we talked about, that you meant what you said, I really feel like there's gonna be something happen with this next negotiation. It was nice to come in tonight a little late and see our letters under 2.5. So it is on the agenda. Um, I've had communications with both Ms. Acosta, President Acosta, and Dr. Contreras today, in fact, um, about our contract. It's gonna be opened up in the next meeting. So I'm not gonna talk about that much, talk about it that much tonight. There are some things that are a bit negotiable about whether they are part of CWA or not. Um, 
it's the difference between a job description and a job duty and a job title. There's something that's more of a job duty. It's not defined. There's no job description. I'd like to see it become formalized somehow. I'm not sure how that process works. Um, I'm very new to all of this. I went to my first board meeting in September. This is the eighth or ninth one that I've gone to. I'm learning a lot as I go. I have a little bit of traction in this. I kind of feel that I'm suited for this type of work, um, especially the public speaking part. I represent hundreds of people, and there's 20 to 30 individuals that aren't PVFT that work full time. They do after school and they sub. I represent them, so I'm speaking on behalf of all those people, not just myself, even though I am going to benefit from some of these things if they do happen. So again, I just wanted to come tonight, welcome you to your new throne, and I've already had some great interactions with you and with President Acosta. so I really, really appreciate that, and the board in general. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to come up and talk on behalf of the people that I'm representing in this oncoming negotiation and in our union. So have a great night. Welcome and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Florin. And thank you all um, our represented um, workers for showing up this evening and speaking um, and our non-represented in Pavam. Um, now I will move us to um, item 8.1. Um, the Memorandum of Understanding between PBFT and PBUSD, Compensation for Covering Physical Education and Special uh, Services. And this item will be presented by our Interim Assistant Superintendent of HR, Mr. Saxon. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, President Acosta. Sorry, I was looking for the intro. I apologize. Uh, Superintendent Contreras and Board of Trustees. My name is uh, Brian Saxon. I am the Interim Assistant Superintendent of HR. Uh, for a public hearing tonight, we have a memorandum of understanding between PVFT and PVUSD. Um, this is talking about our PE teachers and our special education teachers who often when there is a teacher who is out um, and needs a sub and no sub is available, they will take on the entire class of that teacher um, because in most cases, it's, it's an easier process for a PE teacher or a special education teacher to absorb another class. They know the routines. They know the students. They're usually in the same space. And um, we did not have anything in our contract that addressed this. We do have it in our contract where teachers uh, who take on extra students, like if a class is split up, have a special pay rate. But we wanted to ensure that these teachers in these very specific situations had a rate that was applicable to them. So being that this is a public hearing, um, we'll have, I'll, obviously, if there's any discussion, but we will be bringing this back on May 22nd as an action item uh, and hope for your approval at that time. And that's it, sorry. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers on this item? No, we do not. All right, seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for questions, discussion, deliberation, and I'll remind the board that this is not an action item tonight. It's uh, just merely a report and discussion. Okay. I think everybody's good. We look forward to seeing you on May 22nd and later tonight, so don't go too far. I won't. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now moving on to our action items. We will start with act, uh, first action item 9.1, approve a resolution number 23-24-46, acknowledging Pride Month and the progress fl flag. And this report will be presented by our coordinator of counseling programs, Ms. Chrissy McLean. Welcome. Good evening, Board of Trustees, President Acosta, and welcome, Superintendent Dr. Heather Contreras. My name is Chrissy McLean. I'm the coordinator of counseling programs and I'm honored to present this resolution to you all today, acknowledging Pride Month and uh, the progress flag. We're gonna have um, the students read a few portions of the resolution for you. Good evening, board. My name is Eli Romero, and I'm gonna read this, the part that I have. Whereas the Pajor Valley Unified School Board stands in solidarity with LGBTQI plus PBUSD students, staff, and families, and 
Whereas acts of hatred against LGBTQIA plus members of our community will not be tolerated. Hate and discrimination have no part in our community and... Whereas all children and youth should be able to attend school in a safe and inclusive environment free from discrimination. And civil rights laws and California Education Code sections 200 to 220 contribute to such environments and... Whereas policies that special, especially mention sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression are associated with students feeling safer, low levels of bullying, decreased incidence of harassment related to sexual orientation, increased teacher slash staff interventions, and a greater reporting of incidents in a safe, accessible, accountable process under California Ed Code and... Now, therefore, be it resolved that Pajaro Valley Unified School District recognizes the month of June as LGBTQIA plus Pride Month and will, be, and will begin the imp implementation of flying the progress pride flag, pride flag at its buildings on Harvey Milk Day, May 22nd, and continuing through June, as well as during the month of October, celebrating LGBTQ plus History Month and October 11th, National Coming Out Day, to inspire equity, create alliances, celebrate diversity, and establish a safe environment in our schools communi and community and that this resolution be distributed to every school in the district. And on behalf of the students and the community, we ask that you approve this resolution. Thank you all. Do we have any public speakers on this item? Yeah, we have six. Uh, Pam Sexton, Bobby Marshall, Jen Holtz, Mark Luengas, Eli Davies and Nat Lowe. Hi, my name is Pam Sexton and I'm a teacher at the Watsonville Adult School and welcome um, to the district. Um, and I wanna, yeah, thank you for whatever support you can give to our, um, to the LGBTQ plus community. And I wanna suggest that we raise the, the, progress flag, the inclusion rainbow flag, every day. Every day that school is open, that flag should be flying. Um, right now, every day we have the MIA POW flag. The rainbow flag is a flag that would represent safety and love. And this is Mental Health Awareness Month. And it would make such an impact on so many of our youth, both our queer youth and our youth who have family members, it, it would be very important. And the CRE contract is related to this issue. The CRE supports understanding oppression, understand, uplifting marginal, historically marginalized groups. Please put that on the agenda and support the renewal of the CRE contract. Bobby Marchesal, back again. Thank you for having me. Hopefully this is a, an easy vote and I just want to add my voice to the support. I wear a couple different hats for this as a teacher, uh, as a parent. Um, in a couple weeks, I'll have the opportunity to walk uh, to receive my master's certificate in sexuality and religion, something I finished work on a while back. And I'm a minister within a denomination that is open and affirming of LGBTQ siblings. And I say that to say, I've had the opportunity to work in settings where I've worked with, with students and with others who have um, had damaging things said or been in difficult uh, settings that were toxic. And so to be able to be a district that supports and shows our students uh, who are identifying in the LGBTQ community that they are valued, that they are loved, that they are cared for, uh, means a lot. And so please just pass this and uh, thank you for doing it and continue to support our students. Thanks. Good evening again, Dr. Contreras and trustees. Again, my name is Jen Salinas Holtz and I'm a PVUSD staff person and parent. I also work with and advocate for LGBTQ plus students in our district as a Gay Straight Alliance advisor at two elementary and middle schools, Alianza and Lakeview, and as a member of our district's LGBTQ task force. 
I'm here tonight to stand up for these brave LGBTQ plus and ally students presenting the pride flag resolution and to thank the board for your ongoing support for queer and trans students in our district. I'd also like to highlight that four of these five students who just presented this resolution are queer youth leadership award nominees and awardees this year. <laughs> They're amazing. And the fifth is an ally who volunteers at the event, which is this Saturday. I hope some of you will be attending. Um, as you know, LGBTQ plus students, I'm sorry, I'm trying to hurry, are at higher risk than their straight and cisgender peers for bullying, harassment, assault, family rejection, homelessness, self-harm, and suicide. This is not because they are queer and trans, but because of homophobia, transphobia, hate, and bias. And as advocates for all students in our district, it's our job to, make, to do all we can do to make our school environment safer and more welcoming for LGBTQ plus students. And flying the pride flag at our schools is an important step in that direction. However, Thank we you. still have more to do. Thank you. Hello, board trustees. And I wanted to state that this is a really important thing to me. Raising the pride flag every single day is a symbol of our community. I have been in this, um, I've been advocating for LGBTQ plus rights since I was in seventh grade, and I joined my Lakeview QSA in sixth grade. This is a very important thing to me because I see our community, I wanna stand up for everybody. So please, put up the pride flag and help us out. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nat Lowe, Area 7. Um, I'm here to speak in strong support of this resolution um, as a queer, trans, non-binary person who lives in this district. Our queer and transgender students deserve to be safe and supported and empowered in their schools. There's an alarming rise in homophobia and especially transphobia um, nationwide, and it's a really scary time to be a young LGBTQ person. And I want to point out that the politicians and the right-wing interest groups that are leading the national attack against LGBTQ students are the same ones that are attacking ethnic studies and programs that empower students of color. These things are all connected. And as you all have been challenged on ethnic studies, you will be challenged on LGBTQ inclusion. It's a matter of time before that comes to this district. And I hope that you will do a better job of protecting your queer students than you have your students of color. The community will be watching you. Good evening, board. Again, I'm Eli. Good evening, Dr. Contreras. I use they, them pronouns. I'm queer, trans, non-binary, and I want to emphasize the connections between acknowledging Pride Month, ethnic studies, and mental health. Those that fight to have their humanity acknowledged within a dominant society have always had to struggle against the status quo, against oppression, against aggression such as racism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, and others. Living within those oppressive structures causes traumas that exacerbate chronic stressors and contribute to mental health challenges. Raising the progress flag within schools is an important and welcome show of support. I second Pam Secton's call to raise the pride flag every single day, show support for queer and questioning students, take action to make schools safer for them in a country that is increasingly criminalizing and trying to erase queer and trans lives. There are 550 anti-trans bills active in the U.S. in 2024 alone. Take action. I'll bring it back to the board now for questions, comments, deliberation. I have a comment. I'm sorry. I hope I looked up. Sorry, trustee Dr. Holm, please. I occasionally get, you know, questions on, you know, why, why do we need resolutions like this? Why do we need to, why do we need to fly that flag? I see two contrasts. I saw beautiful interactions in my son's friend group where there was this graceful adjustment when one of his friends changed their pronouns. It was effortless for them. And the ease with which his friend group, like, oh, okay, we can use they, them. It was a non-issue for that group because they understood. Like, that was just their friend. It was fine. I contrast that with emails that I get warning against the gay agenda. Spoiler alert, 
those of us in the community, our agendas, we just want to live our lives. That's it. That's our agenda. If we ever get to the point where the first vision, where it's like it's just a non-issue, is all we remember, and I can't remember a time where nobody remembers a time where we are warned against things, then maybe that's not necessary. Maybe this resolution isn't necessary. Maybe a flag isn't necessary, but that time isn't now. And so with that, I'm proudly would like to make a motion to support this. Thank you, I have a motion. Is there any other comment? Trustee bolano -Skow. I'll second, thank you for those comments, uh, Dr. Holm. And thank you for our speakers and for all the work being put into the resolution, but more importantly to to uh, advance this work in our district. I, I feel like I, hear, I see a lot of good work and hear a lot of uh, positive things about the community's work in making our district a safe place for everybody. So thank you. I want to thank um, Nora and Ricardo, Yerena, Raices, and Cariño for all their work they do for our families as well. Uh, they invited me this Saturday. I'm sorry I can't attend. I have a family wedding. But I just want to thank everybody for being here and for your work. Thank you, Trustee Bolano scout So I have a first and a second. Any further deliberation? Seeing none, I'm going to call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? The motion carries 601. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And now moving on to item 9.2, resolution number 23-24-44, Student Mental Health Awareness Week resolution. This report will be presented by our coordinator of counseling programs, Ms. Chrissy McLean. Board of Trustees, President Acosta, and Superintendent Dr. Heather Contreras, hello again. Um, yes, I bring before you the um, resolution to acknowledge May 6th through May 10th as Mental Health Awareness Week. And I will read just a few portions of this resolution as it is posted in the agenda. Whereas mental health is an important part of a child's overall health and well-being, mental health includes children's mental health, emotional and behavior well-being, and mental health affects how children think, feel, act, and connect with others. And whereas PVUSD is dedicated to providing universal social-emotional learning to all students, teaching competencies of self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision making. And whereas PBUSD is in alignment with the California Department of Education statement, social emotional learning is fundamental to academic success and must be woven into the work of every teacher in every classroom in every after school and summer learning program if we truly want to prepare our students for college and careers. And PBUSD is committed to implementing multi systems of support aligned with the whole child approach ensuring every student gets what they need to be socially, emotionally, and academically well. Whereas school counselors and mental health clinicians also offer a range of services to help reduce mental health stigma. And students are provided with services and programs within the school environment that aim to improve students' feelings of connectedness. And whereas the need for comprehensive and coordinated mental health of students in school is a critical part of an, over, of an overall education plan and a priority in PBUSD. With that, um, I ask for your approval of this resolution that is also recognized by uh, CASC, the California Association for um, School Counselors, as the week of May 6th through May 10th as mental student Mental Health Awareness Week. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers on this item? We have two. Nelly Vaquera and Marilyn Garrett.
Good evening, board. Um, my speech earlier was really long, and so I couldn't, I couldn't get to this last part, but it deals with mental health. Um, so as I mentioned in, our, in my earlier statement under PBFT comments was, is that mental health, it's, it's important to us. So one of the items that can cause stress for educators is finances. And, um, and then that can also, I mean, it's finances cause stress for a lot of us right now. So one of the things that we do here um, in the PBFT is we offer a scholarship opportunity for um, students, uh, graduating high school students of our members. We have, a, a, have an application process and all of that. So I just wanna name the 14 students of members that we have who, have rec who are, will be receiving an $800 scholarship. Um, Adam Allen, these, are, these two are students from Aptos High School. Adam Allen, who's um, the son of Jen Geyer, she's a teacher at Valencia, Owen McGinty, um, Matthew, Matthew McGinty is our member. He's a teacher at um, Lakeview Middle School. Can I finish the others just because I started? Um, Watsonville High School. Uh, Bianca Saldana um, Zuniga, uh, child of Maribel um, Zuniga, teacher at Oloni. Mariana and Isabel Lobato Vincento. I don't know if it's Vincenzo or Vincencio. Um, they are the children of Maritza Vincencio Lobato, who teaches at Alianza. Uh, Brody uh, Jack Legions, uh, child of Sarah Graham Legions uh, from McQuitty, and Hayden Henry, um, child of Sean Henry from um, Watsonville High. Ooh, Madeline Molanchon, one of my favorite Watsonville High School teachers, Patrick Molanchon, my, my, both of my children's French teacher. Um, Aiden Higgins, uh, child of uh, Skyla Higgins. A teacher at Aptos High. Abigail Deutsch, um, the child of Kelly Bermudez Deutsch, a teacher at PB High School. And then um, Dalia Pressman Zend, Zend a child of Robert Pressman, he's a teacher at Freedom. Emma Rieger, Joni Rieger's um, child, from, and she's a teacher at Radcliffe. And Stella um, Rubel, Sonia Buenuelos' child, from, and she's a teacher at Radcliffe. So thank you for t letting me go ahead and go over so I can thank just you, acknowledge Nella. all those students. Thanks. So it's clear there are many factors causing mental health problems. And there's one that you can really remove, and that's the Wi-Fi radiation. And I am going to read a little bit from what it's called Wi-Fi in the library or anywhere. Is this a convenience or is it a health hazard? And there are sections here on studies showing health effects, doctors calling for the harm. Here's a section right here. Is microwave radiation linked to any serious diseases? Yes. Neurological diseases, sleep disorders, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's disease, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, genetic effects, cancer, et cetera. How come there's only one minute and uh, the new superintendent, it was always two minutes. And in the old days, when I started teaching and up through the years, it was three minutes. Uh, to me, this limited time is to cut off comments and you hearing what you really need to hear. And I applaud, I'll leave you with this. Um, I applaud the students tonight, and I hope you take to heart what they said and act accordingly in their interests, whether it's popular or not. It's the right thing to do. That's my Thank opinion. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. I will bring it back to the board for questions, comments, and deliberation. Trustee Dr. Holm. Yeah, it's funny, as I was sitting here, you know, I, I had you know, read the board agenda and the materials, you know, over the weekend. And um, of course, I am absolutely in support of this. And what struck me was just how important 
this is and how easy it is for you know, our, us as individuals and you know, to internalize the stigma against mental health. I think back to a conversation I had with a site principal and an academic coordinator today, and I was just talking about some of the challenges I have as a, an adult with ADHD and how one of the things I do, I don't do in board meetings is, you know, I don't do crochet because I don't want to be perceived as not paying attention. But that's actually something that would actually support me as an accommodation in actually paying attention better and support me in listening better to my constituency. And I think about that and it's like, huh, that would actually be an opportunity for me to be an example you know, to our community about what it looks like to actually you know, to be in the community with you know, being neurodivergent and to have conversations with people about what you know, accommodations look like. And so I think about that, and I think about what you know, these resolutions you know, actually mean and what it means to actually live and put those things into action. And I just I want to thank you for the opportunity uh, to reflect a little further on that. And maybe that's something we all can do. So anyway, just thinking about that, and I'll, I'll make a motion. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. I have a first. Trustee Bolano scow Second, uh, thank you. Just a brief comment about uh, building the positive culture and, and having programming and classes that are fun for all of our kids at all of our schools. You heard me advocate for our visual arts, music, of course, uh, hands-on learning classes. Uh, we learn about the different modes of learning. Some people are not going to go to in math in college. They need hands-on learning. They need vocational classes. And I think we need to bring those back so kids can enjoy, really enjoy, and, and find their gifts and talents, and that builds confidence and self-esteem. So thank you. I'll make a second before I forget. Thank you. I have a first and a second. Any other deliberation? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries 601. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I will now move us on to item 9.3, resolution number 23-24-45, recognizing National Foster Youth Awareness Month, May 2024. This report will be presented by Student Services and representative of the PBUSD Healthy Start Team, Mr. Slider. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Board President Acosta, Board Trustees, Superintendent Dr. Contreras and the PVUSD community. I'm Ben Slider, Coordinator of Student Services, and it is my honor to present tonight our proposed resolution. This resolution identifies May as National Foster Care Awareness Month and affirms our collective commitment for foster youth of PVUSD and the adults in their lives. Healthy Start Registration Technician Daisy Brooks, uh, Monica Torres, and Ruth Leone will help me with reading a few lines. Whereas the month of May is set aside as, foster, as National Foster Care Month to recognize the collective relationship across community organizations to support youth in foster care programs and the last day of the month, May 31st, as National Foster Parent Appreciation Day and... Whereas PVUSD is committed to improving student equity as well as being an innovating and supportive organization that is committed to serving, inspiring and promoting student success as well as working in partnership with local agencies to ensure that all students are receiving the resources and support necessary to be successful and Whereas PVUSD provides its Healthy Start program a sustainable and free service to all foster youth in PVUSD to facilitate foster youth, placement support, education to site staff in providing support with direct and indirect services through a case management and a cross-collaborative department and organization approach and Whereas resource parents, relative caregivers, group home staff, mentors, advocates, 
Social workers, volunteers, and organizations provide stability, valuable support, and compassionate encouragement for, for over 437,000 youth in foster care across the United States, more than 60,000 of whom reside in the state of California, and... Whereas PBUSD, in collaboration with teachers, Counselors, administrators, office and support staff members provide educational and social emotional services and support for students in foster care each academic year. And now and therefore be it resolved that the board of the Pajaro Valley Unified School District in the state of California hereby recognize May 2024 as National Foster Care Month and call upon the Pajaro Valley Unified School District community to continue its cross collaboration in support for its students in foster care. And with that, we respectfully request the board to approve resolution 2324-45. Thank you all. Do we have any public speakers on this item? We do not. All right, seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for questions, comments, discussion, and deliberation. Any questions or comments? If none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion of support. I'll second that. I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion carries 601. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and moving on to item 9.4, Memorandum of Understanding between PBFT, PBFT and PBUSD, Volunteer Coaching Support for Interns, Provisional Intern Permits and Variable Term Waivers, and this, pres this report will be presented by our Interim Assistant Superintendent of HR, Mr. Saxton. Welcome. Good evening again, President Acosta, Board of Trustees, Dr. Contreras. My name is Brian Saxon. I'm the Interim Assistant Superintendent for HR, and I'm pleased to present to you this MOU. This is for um, our counselors. We have one of these that is similar for our teachers to mentor our uh, emergency permitted credential teachers. So this is very similar. Uh, this will be asking counselors to be a voluntary coach uh, for some of our counselors who are interns or under some sort of emergency permit. Um, and you can see through there what they will be paid. Um, and so more and more we are seeing that's, that um, there, are this, there is this need for our coaches as well as new teachers who don't have their clear or preliminary credentials yet and they have to go through one or two years of an emergency permit or an internship before they become fully cleared. So with that, we would um, appreciate your approval of this MOU. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers to this item? We do not. All right, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for questions, comments, discussion, deliberation. Trustee Dodge Jr. Uh, yeah, I have just a quick question. What are we doing to make sure that once these teachers get their permits or teacher credentials that we make sure they aren't taking positions of teachers who have been here for 20 to 30 years. I know there's some teachers in my trustee area who feel like when these types of programs are installed, they feel like these uh, interns are a threat and they feel sometimes slighted by these so th positions. So when we hire interns or emergency permitted teachers, such as a short-term staff permit or a PIP, they are hired either into a temporary position or in a regular permanent position. So they're not, if they're hired into a temporary position, then they would be for somebody who is on leave or is out, you know, for another reason. And that person is given their job back when they return from their leave. We follow, there's contract language around that. If they're hired into a permanent position, they are then um, taking the position of somebody who has left the district, who has res retired, resigned, moved to another position. Um, and so no current teachers or tenured teachers or counselors are at, at any kind of disadvantage or at, um, in a position to lose their job via one of these credentials. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. I'll make a motion. Trustee Bolanos, I make a motion to support it. Thank you. I think this is important. 
Thank you, Trustee Milano-Scow. I'll second. All right. I have a first and a second. Any other deliberation? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That will carry 601. Thank you. Uh, next item. 9.5, Memorandum of Understanding between PBFT and PBUSD for the bilingual stipend for special education employees. And this report will be presented by our interim assistant superintendent of HR, Mr. Saxton. Good evening again, President Acosta, Superintendent Dr. Contreras, and Board of Trustees. I am Brian Saxton, interim assistant superintendent of HR. And so this is another MOU between PVFT and PVUSD, recognizing the fact that we do have bilingual uh, staff working in special services that speak languages other than Spanish. In this case, this isn't solely for this, but in this case, we're looking at our staff in the certificated world who are fluent in American Sign Language. Um, there could be other languages that we uh, that would be included in this, but this matches the one we currently have in our contract, but just including languages other than Spanish. So we respectfully request your approval of this MOU. Thank you. Do we have any public comment on this item? We have none. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for questions, comments, and deliberation. I'll Trustee Bolano Scow, I'm sorry. Would this include Misteco? It would if they are in if they are um, a special education teacher or service a special education certificated member. And the issue with Misteco is we would have to come up with a district test that would prove that they're fluent in that. Um, it's my understanding that it's not a written language, so we would, it is? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So I guess I'm wrong on that one. But yes, we would have to develop a test to assess them, and then yes, we would, this stipend would be applicable to them. Yeah, I'd just like to make a plug for that because I know that's a challenge sometime uh, yeah. communicating with our Misteco community, so. I'll make a motion to support it. Thank you, Trustee Bolano Scow. Trustee Dr. Holm. I'll, I'll second. Thank you. Did you have any questions or comments? No. Okay. Uh, I, I just have a sure. quick question. Trustee Dodge Jr. Quick question. What are we currently doing to make sure we have enough behavior technicians and instructional aides to work with special ed students? So we are actively recruiting. Um, I just brought this up in closed session. Our analyst who works for our special education team. Her name is Elizabeth Mejia, just recently was nominated for Innovator of the Year for what she's doing to go out and recruit staff to these positions as well as our certificated positions. Um, we are running our own job fairs. Um, they're visiting uh, Cabrillo, UCSC, CSUMB. Uh, they are advertising through EdJoin, um, LinkedIn, some of those other online sites. Um, and then anybody we get who comes in who wants to sub for us, we are talking to them about do they want a permanent position. We have these other positions. And then Liz follows up on every available lead that she gets. And then Pam Shanks, our director of Classified, is also supporting that, just reaching out to staff and people. And then lastly, our special ed team. Um, whenever they are meeting people or working with people, whether that's an agency or somebody else, they are asking them, you know, do you want a job? Are you interested in a job? And so we're continuously trying to fill those positions. How many positions do we currently have open? Off the top of my head, I don't know. I'd have to look. Right now we're kind of in flux because this is the time of the year when people are resigning and we're trying to fill positions for next year. But I can get that information for you. Yeah, if we can, and I'd be interested to see how many people are actually applying. Okay. So, thank you. Uh-huh. Trustee Dr. Holm, did you have a question that came up or a comment? I just want to, to caution us to be very careful about diverging too far from the agenda item. All right. I have a first and I have a second. Is there any other deliberation? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That will carry 601. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. And now we will move on to um, our report and discussion items. Item 10.1, the PBUSD Visual and Performing Arts Update. This report will be presented by our coordinator of APA and GATE, um, Stephanie Monroe. Welcome. 
Thank you. Good evening, President Acosta and Board of Trustees, and welcome again, Dr. Contreras. I'm very excited to present a year in review of the Arts at Pajaro Valley Unified tonight. I'd like to thank the Director of Teaching and Learning, Peggy Pugh, the Cabinet members, and our Vapatosa, Rhea Hurt, for all of her work to support teachers with professional development, as well as our really cool graphic design tonight, um, and a lot of the images that went into the slideshow. Um, I also want to take, uh, thank the VAPA teachers during this Teacher Appreciation Week uh, for providing students core content and a vehicle for self-expression. I'd like to start with this quote, which I think underscores PVUSD's constant commitment to providing a comprehensive arts education to students TK through 12, and it is, the arts are an essential aspect of student, of human development, that is, of knowing and being in the world. The arts are fundamental to education. I'd like to thank everyone who supported our students by viewing the show in this building. The art will be on display here on the first, uh, third, and first, second, and fourth floors through May March of 2025. I hope to show tonight how the five disciplines of, of the arts, including visual art, music, dance, theater, and media arts, enhance the educational landscape through high interest engagement, and um, how it can positively impact educational outcomes for students in a variety of ways, including attendance, high school and college graduation rates, uh, social emotional well-being, community involvement, and opportunities for our most at-promise students. The, student, the teachers in the visual and performing arts seek opportunities to include all students and provide instructional interventions at every level. Um, a recent study by the Arts Education Partnership shows that including the arts in required coursework may reduce dropout rate uh, dropout rates in at-risk populations, and other studies indicate that students who engage in art classes perform better in math, reading, and writing. And we hope over time, with standards-based instruction practices fully implemented, we'll be able to see these outcomes in our district as well. Currently, we're laying the groundwork to help our district um, achieve these goals uh, in, in these ways for everyone. Um, this is an example of some students at Bradley Elementary accessing the arts with music. It's pretty cute. Uh, here's uh, our new uh, music teacher, uh, Mr. Zachary Latham, and his Bobcat Band at Rolling Hills Middle School. It's kind of cut off at the bottom, but it says that they are cultivating a sense of belonging. Uh, this image is from um, our new teacher, Mr. Stuart Langsam at EA Hall Middle School. Uh, currently in PVSD, we have 15 of 16 elementary schools with full-time uh, music teachers. All middle and high schools uh, have band, and um, two of nine of our secondary schools offer choir, but with Prop 28 funds being able to be used, we hope to expand that. Uh, here we have an example of cooperative learning and language development in action and uh, with Ms. Uh, Miran McPolin at McQuitty. Uh, the uh, music teachers at the elementary schools teach each of the uh, classes on campus 45 minutes uh, a week. This is uh, just an image of a student who's doing a printmaking at um, Hall District, and uh, right now we have 16 of 16 elementary schools with vi a visual arts teacher, four of six at middle school, and um, all of our high schools, it's not mentioned here, but all of our high schools have it as well. Uh, this is Ms. Angie Moran at Ansoldo introducing sculpture and academic language, and we know that performing visual and language arts can build skills, confidence, and uh, understanding for English language learners. Here's an image of Golden Brown's CTE Media Arts class. Uh, this is at um, Watsonville High School on a field trip to the San Francisco Legion of Honor. Um, and college and career readiness. Uh, uh, quality arts programs are built on art standards, which guides the design of curriculum, instruction, and assessment. And this guidance promotes um, sorry, promotes student development of the creative capacities necessary for college, career, and life in the 21st century. Here's an image of some students from Aptos High School at the Carmel High School Arts Expo uh, with about four, four or 500 other students uh, participating in this, a, a lot of collaborative work. Um, so each of our, once again, each of our three 
comprehensive high schools offer 2D and 3D art. Um, on the right, you see a UCSC panel uh, organized by CTE to discuss careers in the arts, and these presentations occurred at Watsonville High School, Aptos High, and PV High. So kudos to Julie Edwards and her team for organizing this and giving students opportunities to learn more about opportunities available to them. Uh, we know that the creative economy in California alone produces 5.3 million jobs and uh, contributes 3.5 Eight, sorry, $358.9 billion to the economy. So uh, we give our students opportunities to um, participate in these types of careers. Uh, we even have students from our district now who are going to be, who have been offered paid internship opportunities at the UC Arts and Sciences this summer, and this is their location up in uh, Santa Cruz. So their names are listed there as well. It's an image of our uh, Watsonville High School Art Ethnic Studies students visiting Watsonville in the Heart exhibit at the um, Museum of Arts and History, highlighting the Filipino experience in Watsonville. This image is of students at Starlight who are part of the Youth Cinema Project. They're working on their group film. The films are written, performed, filmed, and edited by the students under the guidance of their classroom teacher and the Youth Cinema Project mentors. Uh, the, I, the quote here is that the creative economy actually outperforms industry sectors like government, manufacturing, healthcare, and retail trade, sectors that often receive greater economic development and um, talent development and uh, policy support. And so PBS USD is really doing its part to help uh, increase access to our students to see uh, these types of careers in the future. Uh, these are students at the um, musical, the pajama game, at Aptos High School. And currently, two of our nine secondary schools offer theater classes, but once again, with the Prop 28, we have the ability to, the ability to expand these uh, theater programs at more schools. Here are students at PV High performing Uncle Nacho's Hat for students at Alianza. That was really fun. We have our Lakeview students uh, uh, in Ms. Gina Deshera's class, uh, learning the steps, the practice, the patience, and the collaboration it takes to dance and perform. And uh, opportunities for students, their families and community members and uh, partners to participate is really what's central to building a community. Uh, researchers say that the arts and cultures are key to cities, vibrant vibrancy and quality of life, and findings show that residents who choose a community for the quality of life reasons are more likely to be attached to the community over time, and cities can attract and retain residents and foster a sense of community by improving equitable access to arts and cultural activities, and that's what we're doing right here. These are some students. Um, with, from PVUSD performing with the Santa Cruz Symphony, and that happened both here at the Mello Center and uh, Santa Cruz Civic Auditorium. And we also have um, students performing at the December board meeting. I know you all remember that. Um, here's some examples of a STEAM-based fashion teens event that had several of our students and families participating. Um, the Faces um, performance, which was a collaboration between Aptos, visual, Aptos High Visual Art Department and Choir, and some of the artwork that was on display at that event as well. Uh, quality instruction is extremely important, so we just, we're just we going to always make sure that we're tying to the teaching standards and making sure that we're focused on um, benefiting academic language um, for both our English learners and EOs alike. And, um, it, trying to promote joy and high engagement uh, with regard to SEL as well. This is just an image of uh, our teacher, Ms. Renee Roberts, at Mar Vista. She's actually reading a book, and when this is actually a video as well, but she's, as she's reading, the students are singing in like a call and response. Very fun to watch. I hope, hope you get to see that. Um, El Sistema providing professional development for our PVUSD music teachers. This is an image of our PV High School band in action. Um, some more, just lots of activity going on in our um, elementary schools here in music. High school, uh, this is uh, Watsonville High School guitar. 
and um, positive culture. I've spoken I've spoken to this a bit, so I'm gonna just keep advancing because I know I'm almost out of time. Um, more really cute pictures of kids doing really fun things. <laughs> Fifth grade with um, our kindergarten a gallery walk at a Mesty. And uh, I just wanted to touch on some cultural and environmental responsiveness. Um, students doing the identity uh, a portrait. Um, we have the winner, a second place winner of the art league contest on the left side and a Watsonville graduate on the right side and um, students at the Asian Art Museum in Japantown. Some of our dancers here, and again, PV High dancers, and just to celebrate once again that we were the recipients uh, three years in a row of the NAM Best Communities in Music, uh, Music Education, so we're really very proud of that. I'm gonna skip over that real quick, just to show the commemoral, um, sorry, the mural, up, the murals up at Watsonville High School. These images are also from the City Hall. And I just wanted to thank our community partners, uh, Pajaro Valley Arts, El Sistema, more of our community partners, and once again, um, our collaborations with CTE and Expanded Learning on the many programs that they provide for students all year long. And thank you. Thank you. Do we have public speakers on this item? We have one, uh, Barbie Marshall. Ooh, so much to say, I'll just go. Um, hi, I teach uh, music and theater, Watsonville Charter School of the Arts, and I wanna thank Ms. Stephanie Romero for a great presentation. I love a subtle thing she threw in there at the beginning when she said uh, that she leads core teachers. I noticed that, and uh, I don't know if you know, by the way, my paycheck from the, the stub from the district says release teacher. Um, I'm not a release teacher. We teach core subjects, and. Uh, I just want to point that out. It's so important and we are doing, I just appreciate all the support for it in the district. I had the opportunity to join some of our music educators, the California Music Educator Conference and uh, spend time with them. And we have some amazing music educators. I know the same is true of our visual arts. I was able to take our musical theater collective to a uh, Central Coast uh, ensemble showcase where we got to see uh, McQuitty Elementary with Bard Instruments and Aptos Middle Schools, our junior highs uh, band. So there's just great things happening. I just wanted to add to uh, what she had to say. I do hope as uh, somebody who grew up as a, all four years of high school as a choir and uh, choir geek and then had a uh, career in theater that uh, I look forward to getting more choirs and theater in all of our high schools. And um, I want to thank also Expanded Learning because I know they've done so much and I'm going to end by inviting you to come to see it in action on May 24th or May 30th or May 31st when we're doing the Spongebob musical with 20% of our 4th to 8th graders from our school. So please come and check it out. Bye. Thank you. I'll bring it back to the board for questions, comment, discussion, deliberation. I'll remind the board that this is just a report and discussion item, not an action item. Trustee Bolano Thank you, Stephanie, for a great presentation. Um, we have a lot of great music teachers, VAPA teachers, and they're all telling me how happy they are to work with you, and they feel supported by you. And it's evident in the work and the, the performances and all the, the creative things coming out of our kids at all of our schools, all over, all over the district. And obviously, I'm very, very uh, happy uh, to support that. I just wanted to ask, uh, how is um, the Prop 28 rollout been going? Um, it's my understanding that's supposed to be augmenting, not used to backfill existing programs. And I, I know some schools have been doing that very well. How's that been going out? Yeah, I think overall it's been going pretty well. I mean, I think everybody's you know learning. It's something completely new, and we're also looking at um, uh, like positions and, and classes where we haven't really been hiring in these areas, right? So we're also really seeking uh, qualified people to, to come in. But I would say, you know, it's a little bit slow and go at first, but so far it, it's going really well. We're seeing those positions open up for next year. Um, the schools are, are finding where they can, um, you know, create courses to expand their program. So I would say from what I, I've seen, it's going really well. These are all site decisions that they, you know, they work on with their community. So I, my goal is to try, try to support them in finding, um, you know, or letting them know how they can use their funds. But so far, so good. 
Great, very, very good. Thank you. Um, I know there's a lot of interest, and in, and in, uh, Emilio Alanis, the band teacher at PV High, has been doing a phenomenal job. And I know Watsonville High is getting hungry to build their band program up. There's a concern that with the new health requirement for freshmen, given what the schedules are as they are at those schools, is there a challenge there that needs to be addressed? Because my understanding is if the schedule doesn't change at PV High, a bunch of freshmen can't take band. Is that your understanding as well? Or is it... I can't speak to that. I don't really have enough information. I'm okay. really sorry. Okay. okay. That, that's what I'm hearing from, from, and it just speaks to the need to have sane schedules so we, we have, so our kids cannot, aren't denied opportunities and we can keep these programs growing. Um, and uh, no, those are, those are my main questions. Thank you so much. And just, I mean, arts is core, and, for, and I think many of our, audience or community gets the importance of arts, uh, but it's not always whether it's they're gonna be a professional artist or not. Um, the skills they learn, music teaches us how to listen to each other, and once you can listen, then you can learn anything. Um, the graphic skills, the visual arts, the marketing, there's so many good things that come out of these, these arts, and that's why it's core. So um, in recent decades, we've had to fight for it, astonishingly, but I, I know that we're on the rebound, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bolano scow Anyone else? Trustee Flores. Thank you for this presentation. I loved seeing all those pictures of our students just doing what they love to do. Um, I, did, I particularly liked you know, seeing that Watsonville High band room full again. And I, and I did notice in the picture all those trophies in the back. I mean, they had for years, uh, you know, a remarkable band. I love to see that they're trying to bring that back. Um, that's, just, that's amazing to me. I can't wait to see what we can have in our 4th of July parade. Yes. That'll be fun. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Trustee Dr. Holm. I want to kind of, you know, piggyback on something that uh, Trustee Bolanoskow said, and that's just about the, not even the secondary lessons, but just some of the, the, some of the really important primary lessons that are, 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 you know, brought about through arts education. And I think about, you know, it's like I did, you know, orchestra all through junior high and high school. I was never going to be a professional cellist, let's be really clear about that. But, you know, it taught me the importance of listening to the group. It taught me a lot about, yeah, you know, I kind of needed to sync my music with everybody else's so that the whole piece right. could move forward, right? You know, I think about like the, the arts training, like the, the drawing training that I had and, and, you know, paying attention to details and actually learning to observe what was actually there instead of what I thought was there and how much that carried over into my career as a nurse and how valuable that skill was in early intervention for patient care. All of it was valuable, right? Um, and, and, and it just, it gave me, especially, you know, I referenced my ADHD earlier, but it's like having alternate access to knowledge and learning was so key and so vital, you know, and, and it's like, these pathways are critical to having the kind of success that we want for our students. Yes. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Vice President Trustee Soto. <clears throat> yeah, thank you for the presentation. It's good to see that uh, there's a viable program uh, steamrolling to the district. Because I remember when I worked here, we would have to uh, make classrooms viable for a different purpose. And I remember walking in and seeing the equipment abandoned, band equipment all dusty and sitting around wondering, you know, what happened here? And I remember growing up as a kid or in school, you know, there was always band or something else. Yeah. So it's good to see that, you know, this is happening so we can, you know, try to break those kids away from their phones, teach them a, teach them a skill and you know, cultivate a, a talent in, in all of them. So it's good to see. Thank you. Well, did you, I'm sorry, did, oh, okay. I wanna thank you for your presentation and I enjoyed seeing all the pictures too and also the 
utilization of our um, JPA at the Mellow Center and the use with the symphony. I um, know I've said this before, but um, they're very pleased for our facility that we have there, and we know it needs some work and upkeep. Um, but again, thank you for your presentation and your time and being with us so late this evening thank and you all your much. work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. It's, and now I'm going to move us to item 10.2, the PVUS progress on California State Seal of Civic Engagement. This report will be presented by our coordinator of career and technical education, Ms. Edwards. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening, I'm Board President Acosta, Superintendent Dr. Contreras, Board Trustees. My name is Julie Edwards. I'm the Career Technical Education Coordinator in PVUSD, and I'm excited tonight to share with you about the status of our implementation of the SEAL, the California State SEAL of Civic Engagement. Um, just a little bit of a moment of history. Um, the, the seal is grounded in Assembly Bill 24, which passed in 2017. Um, we shared this background information when we first entertained the idea of, of offering the seal within our district. And it was the intent of the legislature for students to have the opportunity to learn how to engage civically in our democracy. So what is the seal? It is um, a seal, actually. It is a, an, a little gold seal that goes on the diploma for students that earn it, along with um, students who earn the seal of biliteracy, which I know Mr. Berman will be presenting on at the next board meeting. But the, the seal is, is similar but different. They both go on the diploma. And students who have demonstrated that they meet the criteria can earn the seal. The purpose of the SEAL um, and why does it matter? It's an inclusive SEAL. Um, the way that our criteria of worked, works in, in PVUSD is there is no GPA requirement. There are certain things that students have to satisfy. They have to pass um, US history and US government. They have to be on track to graduate by whatever means they are meant to graduate. Um, it's flexible for use in alternative school settings. They can earn the seal as a junior or as a senior, and if they get all of the criteria um, satisfied as a junior, they can list it on their college applications as something they have actually earned and not something that they're um, the, on, on track to earn, which is also awesome, but it's nice to have that, that um, seal in the bag, so to speak. So, um, and it also leverages programs that we already have within the district. So it leverages and gives meaning to the community service graduation requirement, to multiple high school graduation requirements, the Watsonville community or Watsonville High Community Action Projects that are done in the Social Studies Department. And in CTE, we have student leadership as a requirement. And it can also be um, applied to that requirement as well. Just a quick brief on the timeline. Back in the winter of 22, research um, was conducted. Cabinet approved us to move forward in the spring of 22. In the summer of 22, through summer in the city, the internship program, the students um, did the research and made recommendations to a task force that met three times in the fall of 22. We presented to the board in January, and then last year, about this time, we celebrated the first three students to earn the seal. Um, our progress this year, I'm excited to share that now on every PVUSD high school website, you will see a link to the California State Seal of Civic Engagement. Um, the process for um, automating the acquisition of the seal for students to make it easy for them um, was was undertaken by a number of people, including Sarah Ferguson, who's a CTE partner, Hillary Kluger, one of our secondary instructional coaches, who's amazing, and Miranda Felton in the technology department, who helped to build the website. So as you can see on the district website, it's right there under the seal of biliteracy. A student chooses that, whoops, too quick. Um, and they hit this page, um, which is fully bilingual, thanks to Rania Lopez, who is our translator, and I don't know if she's still here, but I told her I was gonna mention her tonight because she translated every bit of this um, deep and wide website that um, families and students can navigate to see what are the criteria in our district. And then if a student is interested, all they have to do is say sign up now, it takes them to a form, they fill it out, 
it, and then a process activates. It, it automatically generates a checklist with deadlines, and they're um, essentially on their way to earning the seal. It's easy to navigate. More progress in the class of 2024. You can see that last year we had three students earn the seal, and this year we're on track for at least 50 students to earn the seal of civic engagement, which is a 16 times increase um, as of today. There will probably be, yay, I know, I'm excited. Um, there will probably be more than 50 um, within the next week or so as we do our final um, gathering of students. And the students receive their award, which is a, a medal like they get for the Seal of Biliteracy. It's a different color, but similar. They get that at their senior awards at their school. So at Watsonville High Senior Awards, Aptos, PV, Renaissance. New school students, um, you can see right now we've got Mariners, Grizzlies, and Wildcats earning the seal, but it's open to all of our students and to our charter schools as well. So super proud of that. And then, come on, do it. Oops, okay. So of those students, they attended 138 civic and community meetings, and their projects included things around environmental advocacy, habitat restoration and educational outreach, community health and wellness, um, and resources for the community to be healthy and more. So the projects are very diverse. The um, seal of civic engagement is um, pretty much content area generic. It can apply to anything. It can be the arts. It can be history. It is anything that the student is excited about that they um, can get engaged with. Um, here's just some pictures of students at different events as part of their earning the seal. You can see a couple of those. Some students working. Um, students sharing their projects. Um, you can see our science director, Michael Russo, there with some students who were showcasing their project. And all of these students were queued up for earning the seal this year. And then what's next? I have some exciting news, which is that Andrea, Carlos, Willie, and I about six weeks ago um, went into a room, shut the door, came out a couple days later, submitted a grant, and we just received notification we were getting a half a million dollars to um, promote the, the implementation deep and wide over the next two years. And that, um, those, those funds are going to be used for teacher, counselor, and administrator um, paid professional development in a community of practice, staffing support for the expansion, student mentoring, workshops, presentations on all of our secondary campuses, excuse me, and community-based field experiences, aka awesome field trips for student service learning um, access and engagement. So we had parked some nice chunks of money so that we can get students out into really interesting places that they are excited about. So um, Jenny M and Alexis Persley in our finance department helped us with the budgeting and making sure that grant was as shiny as can be before we submitted it and we got it. It's the last, I have to say this, it's the last of that chunk of money that's being given out for um, State Seal of Civic Engagement in California. There were 11 awardees, and we were one of them, and we got um, the entire amount that we had requested. So very proud of that. It was an incredible grant opportunity. There was no financial match on the part of the district. So it was, it's really the, the most beautiful kind of acceleration funding that we can um, look for. And really grateful for, for the, um, the evaluators seeing, seeing the story that we told about our plans and our hopes for our students. So thank you. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers on this item? Yes, we have one, Marilyn Garrett. Thank you for those presentations, especially the art one. I mean, that's integrated into every area of education, art, dance, music. I used to have art activities every day in my second grade classroom. Um, in terms of the civic engagement, I was just thinking of this evening's meeting and all the students here who were engaged 
in civic democratic advocacy for uh, ethnic studies, for stopping the genocide, for their deep feelings of humanity and dismay of what our government is doing with our tax money to slaughter people in another country and destroy the education and housing and everything there. These students should have an award for civic activity. This place was filled up with those deserving an award for their democratic advocacy. And it's disturbing to me the lack of response from those who are elected to represent the students, very disturbing. They did their responsible role. I haven't seen you do it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on, now I will bring it back to the board for questions, comments, deliberation. And I'll remind the board this is not an action item. Uh, Trustee Dr. Holm. Well, this one's near and dear to my heart since I got to be, you know, involved in this, you know, when it was, you know, being developed. Um, and it's, you know, getting to, to talk to some of the, the early recipients of the CELA civic engagement was really powerful. And, you know, as, as has been pointed out, we do have, you know, we, our, our board has gotten to see a lot of the powerful interests that our students have in the community. And, um, you know, I've had several discussions with many of the students who've advocated for changes that they want to see about, you know, using this opportunity as a way to provide a framework for their advocacy. And I think it's a great opportunity because having these kinds of structures and, you know, it, it does provide, you know, pathways and, you know, an organized way of utilizing resources that the district has and being recognized for the work that they're already doing. So um, I'm just pleased with how this is developing. I'm pleased to see you know, how many students are taking it on. And I'm, I'm just so delighted at the success you've had with the grant. And that's, I'm looking forward to seeing with you know, how that carries through. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Dr. Holm. Anyone else? Trustee Flores? I just want to congratulate your team. Um, that's amazing to go from three to 50. And so, yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to see a presentation in the boardroom like we did before with 50, but it would be amazing to see. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned they'll be getting it at their senior night. So we'll definitely all try, I'm sure, try to attend those as well. But no, that's that's really great. And I look forward to seeing what you can, how much you can grow this with that grant money. So good job to your team. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Flores. Trustee Bolanosco. Yes, thank you. Thank you for sharing all this. Thank you for the discussion. Uh, thank you to all the uh, PV High students who have been contacting me throughout the year about improvements they want to see at their school. I think their government class, they were assigned to, to write an elected official. Many of them wrote you know, very thoughtful comments. Traffic was one of the issues we heard tonight. Obviously, the theater. And I think we're going to be talking about a bond measure soon to alleviate and improve PV High. And if so, that'll be a November ballot measure, which our students will have an opportunity to civically engage in a way to help improve our school district in a very important way. So uh, looking forward to that discussion. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Trustee Belanosco. Anyone else? Vice President Soto. I just want to commend your team on the acquisition of the grant. That, that's good work. Thank you. I will tell them. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Soto. Um, I, I'm going to commend you as well. That's amazing. Awesome. I was just in a meeting the other day where your name came up and it was with nothing but praise and accolades towards you. And so I just thought I would share that with you. Um, and it's in light of all you've been doing here at PBUSD with our CTE and pathways and want to have a maybe a presentation in the future on that and an update and talk about um, working with some of our other community partners to I even expand on that. Not trying to get off topic, <laughs> but it's up your alley. So, um, but again, just congratulations and thank you, you know, and it was 
awesome to be in that meeting and get to hear those accolades to you. And it, this is really a clear reason why. Thanks. So thank you. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Have, thank you for being with us, too. All right, now we will move to the consent agenda. Um, these are items that are routine um, items that come before the board. Do we have any public speakers to the consent agenda? We do not. See none. Are there any items that the board wishes to defer? See none. Can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as it is presented? Move to approve. I have a first. A second. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That will carry 601. And now moving on to um, action item 14.1 uh, action and report on closed session. Are there any items to report from closed session? Yes, there are. So, as of PVUSD board meeting of May 8th, 2024, closed session item 2.1 expulsion. Under closed session agenda item 2.1, the board voted 403 to approve the recommendation from district administration for a full expulsion for the remainder of this semester and next semester for student number 23-24-024. Uh, motion number one, closed session item 2.3. So I move to approve the certificate of personnel report as presented by district administration on May 8th, 2024 with 20 and 44 additional action items. May I seek a second? I'll second. And oh, sorry, you're looking at me. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That'll carry 601. Uh, motion number two, closed session item 2.4. I move to approve classified personnel report as presented by the district administration on May 8th, 2024, 2024, with 11 and three additional action items. May I seek a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? That'll carry 601. And we have three announcements this evening. Announcement number one, Pajaro Valley Unified School District is pleased to announce the selection of Sarah Pierman as the new principal of McQuitty Elementary School. Sarah has worked with students since 2009 as a classroom teacher at both Freedom and McQuitty Elementary Schools and has most recently served as the academic coordinator at Bradley. McQuitty has a special place in her heart, and she was always an elementary student, or was it also an elementary student there? Sarah holds a BA in history and master's in education, both from UCSC and administrative credential from Con Concordia University. We're excited to welcome Sarah to her new role. Go Mustangs. Announcement number, ah, yes. Congratulations, Sarah. Announcement number two. Pajaro Valley Unified School District pleased to announce the selection of Jason Rooney as the new principal of Cesar Chavez Middle School. Jason has served in a number of roles at Cesar Chavez since he started working there in 2003. He's been a classroom teacher, department chair, after school coordinator, summer school principal, and assistant principal, a role he has served in for the past nine years. Jason has recently stepped up to serve as interim principal at EA Hall. Jason holds a BA in business finance from San Jose State teaching credential from Bethany University, and a master's in administrative credential from San Jose State. We're excited to welcome Jason as well to his new role, go, or new role, Go Warriors. Congratulations, Jason. And last but not least, the Pajaro Valley Unified School District pleased to announce the selection of Mary Ann Hilton as the new principal of EA Hall Middle School. Mary Ann has worked with students in a variety of settings since 1996. She spent most of her career in the Live Oak School District where she was a bilingual teacher in grades K through five, an ELA slash ELD curriculum coordinator, summer school principal and director of curriculum and instruction. For the past two years, Marianne has served as assistant principal at Pajaro Middle School. Marianne holds a BA in Latin American and Iberian studies from the University of California, Santa Barbara. Go Gauchos. A master's from UCSC, and an administrative credential from Grand Canyon University. We're excited to welcome Mary Ann to her new role, Go Falcons. I threw that gaucho comment in there because my I son's a gaucho. Were. I knew you I should have been right back at you, Go Gauchos. Um, and that is it. Um, 
So our next board meeting um, will be our regular board meeting scheduled for May 22nd, 2024 here in the city council chambers. And I will now adjourn this meeting at 10.22 p.m. <laughs>